Our next senior, Serenity Carter. Serenity is escorted by her father, Chris Carter. She is the JROTC Command Sergeant Major and has participated in numerous JROTC activities to include blood drives and color golf. She was handpicked for the homecoming parade color golf. After graduation, she plans to pursue a nursing career and maybe join the Army. Leslie Chavez. Leslie is escorted by First Sergeant Stephen Walker, who is her mentor. She is a JROTC platoon leader and a battalion logistical officer. After graduation, she plans to attend college to become a teacher or a counselor. Trista Wright. Trista is escorted this evening by her boyfriend, Seth Coon. She was also handpicked for the homecoming parade color guard. She has participated in numerous JROTC events to include blood drives and color guard. After graduation, she plans to pursue degrees in business management and special education, as well as attend GoTech to learn automotive language. Bell Caldwell. Bell is escorted by Alan and Jacqueline Caldwell. She has been a member of the THS Dance Team, National Honor Society, and Choir for four years. She is a senior representative for STEM Council. After graduation, she plans to pursue a doctorate in dentistry and own her own dentist office. Carla Chiaria. Carla is escorted this evening by her host family, Mr. Hank and Mrs. Becky Wright. She is an exchange student from Belgium, studying abroad for a year. She is a member of the THS dance team and the theater club. After graduation, she plans to attend the University of Belgium to study languages. Jenna told me. Jenna is escorted by her host family, Mr. Hank and Miss Becky Wright. She is an exchange student from Germany. She is a member of the THS dance team, and after graduation, she plans to go back to Germany and finish high school. Courtney Drywater. Courtney is escorted by her father, Brian Drywater, and her mother, Ronald Sanders, her stepdad, Brian Sanders. She is a member of the THS dance team. After graduation, she plans to pursue a career as a vet technician. Skylar Glass. Skylar is escorted by her parents, Waylon and Lisa Glass. She is a two-year member of the National Honor Society and the THS Dance Team. She is a six-year member of the Cherokee National Youth Choir, where she has sang at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in the White House. After graduation, she plans to attend college and major in music, art, or veterinary medicine. Gabrielle Wheeler. Gabrielle is escorted by Robert Wheeler and Amanda Wing. She is a three-year member of the National Honor Society. She has been a Harvard Advanced Medical Sciences Award winner, a nominee for three years, and been accepted into the ICTC Muskogee Nursing Program and is currently attending. After graduation from nursing school, she plans to go to OU Medical School to get her degree in pediatric cardiovascular surgery. Sophia Berry. Sophia is escorted on the field by Mr. and Mrs. Brian and Chris Berry. She was a member of the 2017 OSSAA State Runner-Up Cheer Squad, the 2018 OSSAA Regional Champion, and is competed as a varsity All-American cheerleader. She is in the top 3% of her class. She was recognized by her class as a 2018 All-Sports Queen Candidate. After graduation, she plans to attend TCU, Baylor, or the University of Arkansas. Emma Cates. Emma is escorted by her mom, Diane Cates, her aunt and uncle, Mark and Crystal Whitmore, and cousins Tate, Charlton, and Lily Whitmore. She has been selected twice as an All-American cheerleader. She is a member of the 2017 OSSAA State Runner-Up Cheer Squad and the OSSAA 2018 Cheer Regional Champions. 
She has been a member of the National Honor Society for three years and the Four Point O Society for one year. She is in the top 3% of her class. After graduation, she plans to finish her second year of cosmetology school, become an anesthetician. Her goal is to eventually open her own business. Emma Doss. Emma is escorted by Laura Doss and Robin C. She is a member of the 2017 OSSAA State Runner-Up Cheer Squad and the OSSAA 2018 Cheer Regional Champion. She was recognized by her class as a 2018 All-Sports Queen candidate. She is in the top 1% of her class. She is a member of the Student Council, the National Honor Society, and Tigers in Action. After graduation, she plans to attend OU and acquire an undergraduate in psychology and go on to medical school to become a psychiatrist. Caitlin Renfro. Caitlin is escorted by Mr. and Mrs. Brady and Kelly Renfro and younger sister Maggie. She has been a varsity cheerleader for four years, is a member of the 2017 OSSAA State Runner-Up Cheer Squad and the OSSAA 2018 Cheer Regional Champion. She is in the top 4% of her class and a member of the National Honor Society. After graduation, she plans to attend an SU and major in pre-med and later attend veterinary school. Lily Sosa. Lily is escorted by Mr. and Mrs. Nick, Noe, and Isaac Sosa, and younger brothers, Noe and Danny, and grandmother, Edith Riggs. She has been a cheerleader for four years and is a member of the 2017 OSSAA State Runner-Up Cheer Squad and the OSSAA 2018 Cheer Regional Champion. After graduation, she plans to attend OG College of Nursing and earn a master's degree in her chosen field. Sydney White. Sydney is escorted to Sydney by Chooch and Megan White. She is a member of the 2017 OSSAA State Runner-Up Cheer Squad and the OSSAA 2018 Cheer Regional Champion. She was chosen by Greg, she was chosen by her teammates as the 2018 Cheer Sweetheart and the Vice President of her senior class. After graduation, she plans to attend the University of Oklahoma, the University of Arkansas, to attend obtain her MBA. Colton Booth. Colton is escorted to Sydney by his parents, Mike and Leslie Booth. He is a member of the National Honor Society and captain of the football team. He is vice president of the FFA and co-owner of Top Cut Lawn Care. He is a four-year member of the THS football team, and after graduation, he plans to attend college, but is currently undecided on a major or that university. Isaac Craig. Isaac is escorted this evening by DJ and Becca Craig. He is a member of the THS football team. He wrote and directed a school-based TV series and has been a film man for three years. After graduation, he plans to attend NSU to major in psychology and become a forensic psychologist. Brandon Davis. Brandon is escorted by Kason and Justin Davis. He finished third at the Wrestling Regionals as a, a 2018 state wrestling qualifier. He's proud to be a member of the football team and making it to the state quarterfinals two years in a row. After graduation, he plans to attend but is currently undecided on a school. He plans on working on the power lines and one day on a ranch. Simon Escalera. Simon is escorted by his grandfather, Mr. Lonnie Wildcat, and mother, Natasha Wildcat Escalera. He is proud that he did not drop out of school. After graduation, he plans to attend college, but is currently undecided on a school. He would eventually like to own his own business. Johnny Fuentes. Johnny is escorted by his mother, Ms. Patricia Castillo, and his sister, Rebecca Castillo. He is a two-year starter at fullback. He is proud to have made the playoffs for the last three years and making it to state quarterfinals twice. After graduation, he plans to attend Votech for heavy equipment. Zachary Fuentes. Zachary is escorted by Galen Van and Poncho Fuentes. 
This is his first year to play football, and he was a starting linebacker. After graduation, he plans to attend college and become an engineer. Cole Goodnight. Cole was escorted by his parents, Kevin and Shelly Goodnight, and his grandmother, Paulette Moss. He is a proud member of the THS football team and making it to the state quarterfinals twice. He is a member of the THS baseball team and proud to have been a regional champion. He is the captain of the THS football team and a member of the National Honor Society. Tonight is his 33rd varsity start in football. After graduation, he plans to attend OU and major in biology. Nick Grasshopper. Nick is escorted, escorted by Joseph Grasshopper. He is a two-year starting left guard and first-year starting center for the THS football team. He is proud to have made it to the state quarterfinals two, two of the years he has been on this team. He has started 30 games in the offensive line. After graduation, he plans to take his basics at NSU, transfer to a different college and major in business. He is currently undecided on that school. He would like to open his own shop, either selling or working on cars, and get his license to sell real estate. Ryan Hazinger. Ryan is escorted by Marty and Bridget Hazinger and his sisters, Emily and Hayden. He is proud to have been a member of the THS football team since his freshman year and was able to step up when needed. After graduation, he plans to attend NSU and pursue a degree in law. Nathaniel Justice. Nathaniel is escorted by Mary Hall. He has been a member of the THS football team for three years and was chosen defensive player of the week. After graduation, he plans to work on a pipeline. Danny Lopez. Danny is escorted by Mrs. Glory Lopez and Mr. David Lopez, along with his brother, Amir Gartin. He is a member of the National Honor Society and was a bike student athlete. He is a four-year member of the THS football team and proud to make the playoffs three consecutive years in the state quarterfinals back-to-back. -back. After graduation, he plans to attend a four-year college but is currently undecided on his school. He plans to join the Navy and apply for active duty. Nathan Kirk. Nathan is escorted by his mother, Jennifer Kirk. He is a member of the THS football team and the president of the science club. After graduation, he plans to attend OU to study pre-med and plans to be a general surgeon. Tyler Sample. Tyler is escorted by Mr. Allen Sample and Mrs. Tiffany Sample. He was a member of the baseball team his freshman year and has been a member of the GHS football team since his sophomore year. After graduation, he plans to attend college and become a personal trainer. Isaac Strain. Isaac is being escorted on the field by Mark Strain. He is a proud member of the THS football team and making it to the state quarterfinals two years back to back. He also qualified for state wrestling at 170 pounds. After graduation, he plans to attend NSU. Little Bear Thompson is escorted by Cub Thompson and Coda Joe Thompson. After graduation, he plans to attend college, but is currently undecided on the school. His other options are to work in law enforcement before the tribal police of the United Kituil Band. Drake Tolley. Drake is escorted by Mr. and Mrs. Tolley and Mr. and Mrs. Cooper. As a senior, he is in concurrent enrollment at NSU. He is in the top 10% of his class and has been drumline captain for two years. After graduation, he plans to attend NSU in the fall and go to medical or engineering field. Aiden Yehola. Aiden is escorted by Marcus and Lisa Yehola. He has played football all four years of high school, he has been a member of the science club for three years, and is serving as secretary each year. After graduation, he plans to complete IT certification as ICTC and then attend NSU. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 senior class.
The lead rifle in the car dog is standing as Command Sergeant Major Serenity Carter. The American flag is being carried by the battalion commander, Aliyah Baker. The Oklahoma flag is being carried by Private Trista Wright. The Army flag is being carried by Sergeant First Class, Xenia Howard. The POWMI flag is being carried by Private Katie Avery. The trail rifle this evening is First Sergeant Kyle Sherry. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please stand and remove your hats for the performance of our national anthem, performed this evening by Tahlequah Public Schools music students from 3rd to 12th grades.
I went like this. Like that, after fucking all turned around. Watch. Just give him my nastiest look. When they turn around, I'll just be like, I am. I told her to, she wouldn't listen. I am right now. Hurry up. Turn. All right, welcome, Tiger fans, to the Week 9 football game where the Tahlequah Tigers will host the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. Tahlequah Tigers are 7-1 and one, uh, going into this game. The, uh, the Chargers, 4-4. Four and four. And once again, I'm here with Mr. Ashley Stevens. How you doing, Ashley? I'm good, Mark. Excited to be here. It's senior night. Uh, they look fired up and ready to put the smack down and hopefully get up. Yeah, it should be a one. It should be a good game here. Mark want to draw everyone's attention to know that there's a big thing close to happening. Uh, as you pointed out early on off air that Day Day Leathers. Listen here is 103 yards shy of breaking the single season rushing record that was set by Kyle Lucas. 103, I'm sorry, will tie it. 104 will break it. And that was set by Kyle Lucas when he had 1,440 yards, I believe back in 2015, maybe 2014. So expect a big night from Day Day. We will try to keep tabs of his rushing yards and make sure people are aware that that's a big moment for that young junior running back. Looked like we set the, uh, we teed off on the wrong, wrong yard line there. Trying to kick off from the 35, we're gonna kick from the 40. So the Tigers will kick off, kicking into the north. Back deep is the is Memorial, the Chargers. That's going to go out of bounds to draw a penalty. Mark, player to watch for tonight, number 13, the tailback, Jamani. What was Jamani's last name? Jamani Jones. Jones. I believe you talked with Coach Reeves a little bit earlier. Yeah, coach, talked to Coach Reeves today. Coach Reeves said that that uh, the, the tailback for the Chargers was probably their best player. Said he was fast, but nothing like uh, the East Central quarterback from last week that was, that was very shifty and quick, but said the kid's powerful, which if you look at his size here, actually he's uh, 6'1", 205. That's a, it's a pretty good size high school back. So there's a first play out of the shotgun twin back and that's just a, a simple old uh, ISO to the left. They like to run that, that, that twin back backfield, uh, but you'll see them go to the pistol diamond and also the uh, single back out of the gun, as you see right here. They're gonna try to attack the perimeter. Pretty physical up front, but the, the endurance should be a factor for Tulsa Memorial. Great job by the Tahlequah defense right there, gobbling it up for only a short gain. That's going to bring up third and about six for the Chargers. A whole host of Tigers in on the tackle just then. Tigers look sharp tonight with the orange over white, one of my favorite uniform combinations. 
Yeah, that is a good one. I keep telling Coach Gilbert we need those matte black helmets, oh, but yeah. he keeps telling me he needs about thirty grand. Gilbert's got a little Gundy in him, I think. I'm waiting on him to grow out that mullet, you know. Uh, telling you, he he might do it, but something tells me Mrs. Gilbert would not appreciate that. So handoff right up the middle out of that single back backfield, and it from up here it looks like he's well short of the first down. It's going to bring out fourth and about two for the Chargers. They're not uh, they're not running any punt team out, which they may already have their punt team out. If you look at their sideline, that's pretty pretty threadbare, threadbare out there. Now they're, now they're gonna, I think they're going to go for it or try to get them jump off sides. Nope, they are going to go right up the middle. Good punch, good drive. And it looks like he's got just enough for a first down. Well, and you see the power from that running back right there. I mean, he, he got ahead of steam and barreled over a couple Tigers. And that was nothing more than just a zone right out of the single back and just uh, give it to your back and tell him go get it. And that's what he did. So here they go. They line up in that twin backfield shotgun formation. They like to run ISO and in a, in a zone or a wrap, what we call where they pull the guard. See what they do here. A little misdirection. Tigers having none of it, though. So far, they're relying pretty heavy on that running back. So a no, a no gain, I believe that is Isaac Strain in on the tackle, number 34, senior. So it's going to bring up second and 10 uh, for the Chargers. Shotgun with single back, trips to the right. Handoff inside, to the cuts to the outside. Flag on the play, but it looks like he's brought down there by 53, Blake Corn, Jr. Uh, that flag looks to be in the area of holding. We'll see what they're going to call. Holding is the call against the Chargers. So that's going to back them up 10. Uh, Got to give our first shout out uh, tonight, Ashley, to uh, some Tahlequah teachers. My wife, Mandy Jordan, and Chuck Pack, Vicki Elliott, uh, Nate Jordan, Debbie Peterson, and uh, Mrs. Tillman from the middle school. They are on an airplane flying into Minneapolis listening to us right now. So, How about that? Thank goodness for that free Wi-Fi on them airplanes. Exactly. Exactly. So shotgun formation once again. Single back backfield. Power to the left. Trips to the left, I should say. Back to pass. Looks to his left. Throws. Caught. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two tackles. He's to the 40. He's to the 30. And he is brought down at about the 26-yard line. And that's number 10, Kobe Baker, who finally catches back up to him and brings him down. Just a, a post route, uh, put it right on him, and, and I think we tried to jump the route and then had and then missed a tackle there. Uh, but they are fast, so we got to make sure that we cover up on that. Same formation. Hand off inside. And he's brought down. Pretty decent pickup, about three on the play maybe. I believe that was Dylan Parrish in on the tackle. So it's going to bring up second and about seven for the Chargers as they are on the move. As this, this drive started, I believe, on 35. So twins to the left, single back, gun formation. Handoff to his left. And he's brought down after a decent pickup. Well, is number 11, that's Cole Goodnight in on the tackle. You know, other than that pass play, they're not they're not ripping off big yardage plays. I mean, they're getting three yards a pop, um, and the Tigers are, are making good, you know, contact about the line of scrimmage or around the one, plus one for the running back. So. Correct. Looks like we've got a false start on the Chargers. That's going to back them up five. This is something right here that the Tigers need to take advantage of. When when the other team shoots themselves in the foot, especially when they're driving, we need to uh, buckle down right here and hold them. And I think we've we've talked about this time and time again. A lot of times it's not the amount of penalties, which, you know, those aren't warranted or wanted, but it's the timing of those penalties. Here they were in a short yardage situation, and now they're in a long yardage situation because of a, of a basically what we call stupid penalty, one that they could have controlled. 
So gun, two back backfield. Little misdirection, looking to pass, getting pressured, rolls to his left. Eyes down, he's gonna chuck it. He's gonna get swallowed up by the entire Tahlequah Tiger defensive line, led by number 53, Blake Corn. And uh, Blake has, has begun patented his celebration of the shark fin, tap your elbow, <laughs> baby shark, doo doo doo, doo 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 doo. I'm not real sure what he's doing, but you know, <laughs> good for him. I don't know. Um, I have heard that song. Having a uh, six-year-old girl in the house, I hear I hear baby shark quite a bit. Um, which, to be honest, there are worse songs they could be singing. <laughs> Back to pass, he looks into his left. He goes deep, well overthrown the wide receiver. He was double covered. Actually, so, that's the second fourth down they went for it. That was fourth and 15. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know if they can't punt, don't want to punt. If they thought maybe something in the uh, scouting report for the Tigers said that maybe uh, they could they could, you know, do that. But that just seems odd to me. Fourth and 15 this early in the game. Especially there, you know, Tigers taking over at the 32. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Tigers, like Mark says, take on over at their 32. Marching out on the field. Expect to see a lot of the ball in Day-Day's hands tonight. Oh, goes a motion. I like this motion package. That's the first time we've seen that. They go into mm -hmm. doubles. Empty empty set. Back to passes, Tate. He's got him over the seam. It's Cole Goodnight. He's to the 40. He's to the 35, to the 30, to the 20. To the, oh, he's brought down at about the 16-yard line. Outstanding play right there, Mark. Tell you what, Ashley, you know, that's a – give uh, give Coach Gilbert some credit there. You know, that's something we have not seen. Here we are week nine, and I don't think we've seen that. We have never seen them. That's the, They line up into their normal run formation. You expect that handoff to Day-Day. They, they motion into doubles. It puts one-on-one -on -one coverage with, with Cole Goodnight down the seam. Out, outstanding, excellent play call. So Tate checks the sidelines. They take over first and 10, or they continue on. They'll take over. They have the ball there, first and 10 from about the 18-yard line. Handoff inside, Day-Day. Not much going on that one, Mark. Uh, looks like no gain, or looks like he lost a yard. You know, talking with Coach Gilbert, you know, they, they say that Memorial is very physical up front, uh, but they do believe they'll have a shot to, to hit that perimeter. Uh, and I think they, uh, over through the course of the game, I think we'll see that our offensive line begins to wear them down, and I think we'll start seeing those big runs, you know, hopefully in the first quarter, but definitely in the third and later later quarters. Yeah. So there's a motion, jet sweep to the left. Oh, sniper got him. Kobe Baker brought down by the sniper at about the uh, 20, so that's going to be a loss of two. Looks like also, too, that Day Day and those guys are, are they're leaving just a little bit early, you know, and uh, I don't know at what point the referees are going to put that in check, but they are moving forward at the snap of the ball a little early, so hopefully they can get that lined out so we don't get a legal procedure or false start penalty called on us. Looks like there could be a touch confusion coming from in from the sidelines. They, they march a different personnel package in. But the play clock has not even started, so we're all right. It's going to be third and about, what do you say, 13? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Motion, fakes the jet sweep, back to pass, rolls to his right. He's able to escape one, goes deep. He's got a man in the end zone, and it is... Caught touchdown, Tigers. Man, that's Ashley, Jackson how about Jones. That? How about that? My goodness sakes, they fake the jet sweep to his left. He rolls to his right, gets on the outside of the defensive end. Jackson Jones gets a step on the cornerback and a perfectly thrown ball by Tate Christensen. And the Tigers strike first with a beautiful touchdown pass. And Trey Patrick's kick 
is good. So the Tigers up early, seven, Chargers nothing. Well, and that's what you want to do against this team. You want to jump out. Uh, you want to jump out ahead and, and don't take your foot off the gas. You know, Memorial has athletes, and, and you, you don't want to give them – I know it sounds bad, but you don't want to give them the, the, the thought that there's hope that they could come back or uh, or hang with you. You want to jump out and, and stay on top of them, and we've got to do that against these guys. Um, Absolutely. You know, the thing is, too, Mark, they're in cover one, you know, which they, they just means they have one guy over the top to help. So they're loading the box. They're, they're going to try to stop Day-Day. And so in order to make that work for us, we're going to go over the top on them. I love to throw on cover one. So if we can get them, and we know that they like to run cover four, and so if we start throwing the ball, they'll drop back in the cover four, and then Day Day hits the perimeter, and it's all over. That's right. So Tigers back to kick. 4.49 to go in first quarter. Kick down the right hash, picked up at the about the 25. He's to the 30. Across the field, there's Kobe. He's met with vengeance. I believe that's number 10, Kobe Baker. His last name may be Baker, but I'm going to say he's a lumberjack. That's right. Because he was laying the wood. <laughs> he's not wearing flannel, though. Although it would be a good night to wear some flannel, I'll tell you that. So the Chargers are about to take the field. Single back formation, twins to the right, handoff inside, and he's met at the line, still running his feet, and he's going to be brought down for well, about a gain of one and a half, maybe two. It's good to hear the band tonight, Ashley. They, uh, I was told they were going to try and be especially loud and raucous tonight after, after last week's... Uh, Interesting turn of events where our band was told they couldn't play anymore. Yeah, and I, to clarify with folks back home, that was checked with the OSSAA and confirmed that, that that's uh, they can play all they want. So he's to the 40, he's to the 45, and he's brought down by, by Cole Goodnight at about the 48-yard line. But there is a penalty on the play. Uh, and, again, that's usually in the area of holding, but we're going to see what they're going to call. Holding is the call mark, so uh, – Again, they rattle off a nice about 15-yard, 16-yard play, and it's going to be negated with a holding penalty. And like I said, Tahlequah needs to capitalize every time that happens. They get a big play, but it's called back. We, we've got to we've got to capitalize. Another thing I've noticed is uh, there's lots of helmet uh, helmet popping like good game after each tackle. A lot of sportsmanship going on down there. Another note about the band, uh, you know, Coach Gilbert puts his players of the game out each week, and I, I photoshopped the Orange Express That's and sent right. it back to him and said, uh, I think you should post that, that they were also the players of the game last week too. So inside zone, he's got a seam. This doesn't look good for the Tigers as he's to the 50, to the 40, to the 35, and he is ran out of bounds by Cole Goodnight. Never touched on that play, Mark. Nope, never Big touched. Big time seam right up the middle on yeah. that inside zone play. I could have probably ran through that hole. I just wouldn't have made it as far. I'd have been out of breath after about 10 yards. Yeah, uh, I definitely would have been right there with you. I'm, <laughs> I get out of breath just coming up here to the, the booth. That's why I get up here a little bit early, so by the time we That's go right. on air, you can't hear me breathing heavy. That is right. I'm telling you, folks, by the time we get everything carried up here, we are huffing and puffing. So and he's by we, it. I mean he's the to kids. the left. He's trying to get to the outside, and he is met by Cole Goodnight. Forced out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. Their quarterback is Antonio Cook, who's a senior. So it's going to bring up, what was that, second down? Second short for the Chargers. Yeah, it looks about like four yards, three or four yards. Twins to the right, single back, gun. Handoff inside. Oh, I'm sorry, he kept it once again, and he's brought down by the Tigers. 
It's Parrish on the tackle. Dylan Parrish leading the team in tackles there at the linebacker position. Having a great season. Once again, just another, just another junior, Mark. That's right. I'm telling you, we are young. All right, it's going to bring a third and short for the Chargers. Single back shotgun. This time he does hand off inside. Looks like he's got enough for the first, or it's going to be super close. No, they're waving him. No measurement. No measurement. That the, is a the thing no we have noticed. <laughs> trend continues. Continues? Continues. <laughs> How's that? Got to give a shout out to uh, Eric Jones, who's at home tonight. He's got a bum leg, bum foot, so he's uh, he's watching us uh, from the comfort of his home down there at the Y. Usually he's up here in the box with us he's trying to keep us entertained. Spotter. Rolls to his right. He's got a man open. Oh, just off his fingertips around the 20. Uh, pretty good spacing. He had He had a step. That's Trey Patrick in coverage, number two. You know, looking at Tahlequah's defensive goals, one of the things Keith Wilson and, and the defensive staff likes to preach is they want to get the 9-5-9. Nine, nine. That's nine guys within five yards 90% of the time. They want two or more takeaways. They want to set up or create a score, and they want to get at least four three and outs. And they believe if they can accomplish most of those tasks, they're going to win ball games. Handoff inside zone, and he is crushed. That's a great play. Great job there by the Tiger defense. That's Blake Corn again. Blake's having an early, early good game. Brought down for a loss on the play. He's gonna bring up third and about 11 for the Chargers. But you know they've got two downs. They've already proved that. So oh, we've, they're not we've afraid to go for it at all, Mark. We know that. Single back gun, back to pass. He's looking across the middle. He's poor pressured up. And he's going to be brought down for a big time sack. Goodness Look, sakes, yeah. and that's none other than Blake Corn and his baby shark celebration. I don't know if Heather put out a big bowl of Wheaties this morning <laughs> or what, but and Heather's his mom, folks, by the way, but th that guy is playing like his hair is on fire right now. Out. He's doing a great job. Exciting to watch. So here we go, fourth down. No it's signs of punting. Fourth and 17, Ashley, oh. and that. Oh, that is the old hey. push punt. And that's going to go sell into the end zone. Uh, and Tigers going to get the ball at the 20-yard line. You know, that's, that's a good stop. I mean, you've got uh, the running back. He had one good run called back by holding, but then he, the very next play runs right off the guard and goes for another 20 or 30 yards. But... But that Tiger defense, man, they, they really get big plays right there when they need it. And then the surprising punt, I don't know if you noticed, but the looked like the backfield on that punt was moving way before the ball was ever snapped. Oh, absolutely they were. Well, maybe this crew's going to let it go for a little bit. We'll see. Same formation that they were in when they, they ran it and went for it both times, so maybe that's just one of their ploys. Mark, look, they are loading the box. There are – Nine guys in the box, and we run it off to Day Day. Good pick up there from the 20 to about the 30. That should be good enough for a first down. Nope, they're going to mark him just shy, so we'll call it nine and a half. So it's going to bring up second and that, a frog's hair. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's pretty impressive running uh, between the guard and the tackle with that many chargers in the box, and, and we still get again. nine. Nine guys in the box, and they're they're blitzing. And look at that. Just uh, Oh, my goodness. That should be a first down, Ashley. Pickup of about three on the carry. Good enough for a Tiger first down. Hey, when you're when you're able to to uh, block guys, that when they're bringing more guys, you can block right there. They're blitzing both A-gaps. They run a, a zero technique and a three technique and two five techniques. And then they blitz the inside gaps, and they're blitzing the outside cornerback. The safety's walked up. And the only thing keeping <laughs> is a outside linebacker and a cornerback here on the right side of the field. 
But, Mark, that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter. Your Tahlequah Tigers on top, seven, Memorial, zero. Well, and that's what you want to see at the end of the first quarter. Um, it's like we tell our guys in baseball. We want to win innings. Well, in football, you want to win quarters. If we can, if we can outscore them each quarter, obviously. I'm not a mathematician. But uh, I think you would end the, the game with more points. Uh, before we go any further, I, I uh, do need to mention our broadcast crew tonight. Producing tonight is Owen Martin and uh, Celia Santana, or Chelly, I believe she likes to be called. Run, one in, running uh, camera one, we've got Hunter Burchett. And then down on camera two, outside the press box, in the elements, is Aubrey Gresham and Cheyenne Arenas. And so... Um, and We've Mark, got them a, running things for us. As a lay broadcasting person myself, I just got to say, these kids do a great job. Boy, I'm telling you what. Now, don't let's not brag too much because Hunter's head won't fit out the door when we try to leave if we keep that up. Hey, I just want to update you on a score, a shocking score right now. Skya Took is on top of Collinsville in second, three to nothing. So that is a game that we are going to keep close eyes on. Uh, Skya Took on top of Collinsville right now, 3-0. Tigers, first and 10. Rolls to his left, right. Toad a good night. Catches it, 35. Cuts back all the way across the field. He's got one man, and that one man tackles him at the 37-yard line. He ran about 36 yards to <laughs> yeah. gain six. So, it's all right. He's in a lot better shape than I am. That's right. Yeah. So, a big-time reception there by Cole Goodnight. So, trips to the left. Gun formation. Day Day to the left of Christian. Checks the sideline. Well, I'd like to see him attack this right side perimeter, get Day Day on the edge where he only has one man to beat right here. Looks like we're going to have a delay of game penalty. That's it. Couldn't get the snap off in time. And, again, timing of those penalties, Mark, like we talked about. Here it is, second in, in – a manageable situation. Because now it's going to back them up. But it's going to bring up second and about nine. I'm trying to do math over here, Ashley. I'm trying to keep track of Day Day's rushing yards so we can uh, know when he's getting close to breaking, tying and breaking uh, Kyle Lucas's record. And they did exactly what I thought they'd do, try to get him on the edge. He's at 35, and he skirts up to – Looks here to me to the 40, but they're going to mark him at the 39. I'd give him one more yard, but I'm not in stripes. They ran trips to the left and, and tried to get him on the wide side of the field on the perimeter on the edge. And uh, they did a decent job of forcing him out of bounds right there. They They've got some speed, Ashley. Those, those memorial guys, they can run. Simeon Armstrong takes a sap, round the corner. He's to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. One man to beat, to the 50, 10, 5. Touchdown. And I I may have said Simeon, but let me check on that. Is that did they run the Wildcat? No, that's Simeon that Armstrong. That is Simeon Armstrong. That is Simeon. Fantastic scamper by Simeon Armstrong. Got to the edge, and he was gone. But hold on, Mark. They're having a conference around the 30. They're, they're, I think they think uh, our receiver was holding uh, the, the – uh, and, and that's back. what they're going to call. No, that's nope. a block in the block back in they're the calling back. against the Tigers. Well, that's unfortunate because that negates a 61-yard a run by Armstrong. And I believe they're going to call that on. I believe uh, – I could be wrong, but I think Cole Goodnight. Well, I didn't see it, so I can't argue with them yet before we get all fired up and get people complaining on us about referees. But Well, I'll be honest. When, when <laughs> Simeon ran by, I saw it, and I thought, boy, they might call holding on that. So for them to call block in the back, uh, which to me it didn't look like he had engaged his back. Maybe he had. I just saw him engaged with the players. So uh, I, I don't – it was probably the right call to make if I was guessing. Trips right. Day day to his right. Back to pass. He's got him across the middle. Oh, just threw it to his back shoulder. If he puts that ball on the money, there ain't nobody between him mm -mm. and the end zone. 
Yeah, that's good Cherokee night. County when I say there ain't nobody that's between right. them. Well, I would like to point out, ain't, ain't uh, is a word if all those English teachers are listening because culturally speaking, we understand what that means. So I like it. I like it. It's that same seam route that they're attacking. You know, you put you put Cole Goodnight on a line on one of their linebackers in that in that cover one package, and I like that matchup all day long. Yeah, he's always going to have a step on him. Hand off day day around the corner, gets forced to the outside and forced to the out, out of bounds at around the forty one yard line. Looks like he's going to lose a yard. They're keying on Day Day right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. They're doing a good job with their defensive ends getting pressure. They're not doing a good job containing him, but they're getting enough pressure that he has to take that deep step, you know, where it goes back six yards to get around to the edge. By that point, they're able to get some pressure or some pursuit over the top with their linebackers and the rest of their defensive line. So a good job containing uh, thus far uh, for the Memorial defensive line. But I expect as this game goes on, they're going to be winded. Well, they're playing Iron Man football. There he goes, Mark. Breaks the tackle. He's, hey! Oh, he lost the ball. Oh, but he was able to get back on top of it. Big time scamper there all the way down to the 26-yard line. Mark, he doesn't lose that ball. He scores. That's right. And speaking of losing the ball, you know, I'm trying to think, Ashley. That's, that, I don't have the stat in front of me. But he's only fumbled two or three times this year, if that. I believe you're right. I got a uh, memorial charger, looks like, down on the field. I... He broke one tackle, and then if you saw how it spun his shoulder pads mm -hmm. around, and that's that's what separated that ball from his body, and then they were able to strip the ball. You know, they're taught, you know, three points of contact. You can claw the nose of the ball, keep it on your forearm high and tight, and he does an excellent job when you watch him carry that ball. That's what he does. Uh, and that was just, I think, a, a series of uh, unfortunate events, and we were – very lucky that he was able to get back on top of that to keep this drive alive uh, as, as he had enough for the first down. Well, and credit, you know, credit the Memorial players. I mean, they, you know, uh, getting the ball on the turf, giving themselves a shot. I mean, you, you, there are times in athletics you can, you can do everything right and someone else is still going to, uh, you know, trip you up and make things a little difficult on you. Folks, I wish we had a commercial to send you to. I could – sing something to you i'd rather not though maybe uh maybe eric oh. jones could text me a song you would like to hear i keep i don't know if you can smell it over there folks i'm standing behind our main camera and the window is open but ashley's over on the other side of the room with the window shut i keep smelling wood smoke and tomorrow is opening morning of muzzleloader season, the old smoke pole. And I can't tell you, you're smelling that campfire smoke right now kind of makes me wish I had a deer cabin to go to tonight after the game and get up next to a fire and go go hunting early in the morning, which I can't do, by the way. I uh, will be administering the ACT tomorrow. So, uh, Well, good luck to all those kids out there going to take that. It is probably the most important test you'll ever take in your life. But. No pressure. Do a great That's job. Right. <laughs> hey, and uh, got to give a shout out to our band. Ashley, they uh, they competed, I believe, on Wednesday here at NSU in a uh, big band competition. They came back with all superior ratings, uh, so they did very very good job in their uh, in their their uh, competition. And we have both basketball teams already fired up. They've started practice, I believe, this week. Um, and so you, you've got the Lady Tigers and the Men's Tigers basketball team getting fired up, ready to go. So back to the action. Tate checks the sideline. There's Johnny Football. I haven't said his name much tonight. Johnny Fuentes back in the game. Got twins to the right, up back. Day Day also to the right. So basically a power formation to his right. Hand off inside. And he's going to be brought down by at least three chargers for a loss on the play. Looks like a loss of about three. Nothing going on that play as our blocking on that particular play was – we tried to hold water with a sieve. Yeah. And it happens. Hustling and changing out packages again. Tate telling line what we're going to be doing here. It's the same, roughly the same formation, twins to the right. 
Handoff. He rolls to his right. He makes one man miss. Looks downfield. He's got a receiver, and it is yep. caught. That's Bradley Pruitt. Outstanding catch by Bradley Pruitt to go down low and get it, and he makes a snag at about the 19-yard line. So big-time pickup to get to third and manageable for the Tigers. Going to bring up third and three uh, for the Tigers. Another personnel change and shift. Checks with the sideline. Got the call. Make sure the linemen know what's going on. Day-Day to his left. Johnny to his right. May look to motion, and we'll see. Nope. High snap. Hands off inside. There goes Day-Day. Big to the 15, to the 10, 5. He's going to score a touchdown. Tigers. Just talked about how they block like a sieve. Then they come out on that play right there and just mowed them down. Big time lane, no one touches him, and he scampers into the end zone. That's right, Ashley, another. That was a good hole right there. You can see that thing open up, those blocking schemes uh, that Coach McClure's throwing out there. Uh, they are, they're working. Uh, and so Tigers have a shot here to go up 14-0. There is 9.03 left in the half. And let's see, I didn't get a, yep, they're going to say it's good. The official's a little slow on the call. Didn't know yeah. if they were real sure about that. If it goes between the two yellow sticks, guys, that's it's right. good. Pretty easy call there. Folks, I keep having a little six-year-old blonde-headed girl come up here and want to see me and hug me. Uh, my wife, their mom has been gone all week to Des Moines, so she sure misses her and uh, keeps coming up here to make sure I'm still here. So, Mark, unless I'm mistaken, that is Day-Day Leathers, 17th. 17th touchdown of the season. You know, I don't know what the all-time scoring record is for Tahlequah in a season, but 17 touchdowns, that's quite a few po uh, points. I, I wouldn't turn my nose at it. You know, we talked about Tahlequah's defensive goals, but uh, Coach Gilbert tells us what, her, what his offensive goals are, obviously, is the win, you know. But then they want to make sure they have one turnover or less, obviously the less, but, you know, no more than one. They want to be above 45% on third down conversions. And obviously they want to be at 100% in the red zone and score at least 28 points. And he believes if they can do that, they should win ball games. And let me tell you, looking at these helmets on here, it looks like they've done that in most every game but one. So the kick is taken at the 20 by Memorial. He's got a lane up the middle, and he's brought down at about the 39-yard line. Good open field tackle. That's number 29, I believe. Is that Shaw Thornton? I'd like to take a minute and recognize that family as uh, we keep yes. them in our thoughts and prayers with the loss of their father, Joe Don, and keep uh, Tuffy and, and the rest of the Thornton family in prayers. And I want to say how what a classy move it was by the Tigers to practice early uh, on the day of the funeral so that the coaches and the That's players right. could all go there and be there to support that family. Uh, once again, just shows you how tight-knit this community is. Uh, just a class right. act and should be commended for that. Well, so many people get caught up on, you know, wins, losses, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, this is a high school sport. In, at the end of the day, almost every kid, probably every kid on that field will not be paid to play the game. you got to teach them, teach them how to be a, be a good citizen right there. Well, that was Nathaniel Justice leading the way on the tackle right then for a, for a very minute – Pickup by Jamoni Jones. Actually, got to give a shout out again to those teachers that were flying from Des Moines to Minneapolis. They literally landed with less than, I think, 20 minutes to get to their next flight, and they pulled a home alone. They ran through the airport, and with one minute to spare, were able to get on their connecting flight back to Tulsa. So that's good news for me. No more uh, single parenting this week. <laughs> So, Jamoni Jones give it the carry again off to his, on a zone right, and that's number 53, Blake Korn, again in on the tackle. Uh, no gain. Uh, Jamoni Jones having a difficult time getting anything going against this stout Tiger defense. Actually, I got some unofficial numbers so far. Day Day is sitting at 45 yards so far in the first half. So, as we talk about the possibility of breaking that record today, that's where we're at. Little screenplay. Oh, I thought he was going to get blowed up. Well, he kind of did. 
I think Te I think Cole Goodnight took his foot off the gas because I think he was afraid that he was going to rip his head off. <laughs> but pass was complete for a big loss. Cole Goodnight's there to bring him down, and here come the rest of the Tiger defense. So it's going to be fourth and eternity for Memorial, and it looks like they may actually get in a four-reel pump formation. I could be wrong, and and I'm I'm wrong a lot, according to my wife. Well, I thought I was wrong once. It turned out I was just mistaken. So there you go. Uh, you know, penalty flag. They're going to move them. Illegal substitution or shift? I would believe so. I believe too many men in the huddle. Yep, that's yep, what it is. Right there. Too many men in the huddle. And there goes number 75. So he runs off the field. So that's going to back him up five yards. If you notice, the Memorial coaches are almost out to the hash. Now they're going to walk back. Probably got told by the ref to come back over the sidelines. Motion to the right side for the punt team. He rolls out the old rugby style punt. Low drive. Takes a bounce. It's going to be down by the Chargers at about the 44, maybe 43 yard line. That fire, I don't know where it's coming from, but boy. It might be the 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 cooker the band's cooking burgers on, but they're burning some nice smelling wood in that thing. Man. Whew. I tell you what. If anybody's got a deer cabin they don't use, right, just just let me know. You're just going to put that out there. That's right. That's right. If we have any uh, wealthy Telequa alumni looking to, you know, help someone out right there. Trips rolls to his right, looking deep. He's got a man. He's got the step. Can he put it on him? Oh, just outside the reach of Kobe Baker. Kobe had the – he had the moves like Jagger. That's right. That's right. But, but that's that's a, a good song. I might sing it. That is a big throw. That's about a 30-yard toss that he's trying to put in the bread basket there and just let it sell on him just a little bit. And that tends to happen as the quarterback rolls out and he tends to throw off that back foot not really able to get all that momentum or inertia as we'd say on his front foot and that ball tends to sell just a little bit uh, but I bet he's able to calm down he's able to put it on him that's point. a big word Ashley uh, inertia I, you know, I got word of the day toilet paper I'm telling you what handoff inside he's to the 50 oh I thought he was going to break it and he's brought down at about the 46 yard line that's a gain of at least 12 yard line 12 yard lines 12 yards <laughs> <laughs> they're going to mark him at the 45 they're going to give him a little extra love and I like that That's a 12-yard gain, Ashley. If I'm quick math, that puts us about 57 yards on the day of the track. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Timeout on the field, 6-12 to go. Tigers up, 14-0. You know, and I know it's kind of a low-scoring event right now for the Tigers, but it's really been all Tigers. Yes. Uh, just that clock is, is running. They both run the ball, so you're going to see this clock run a little bit faster. Should be a quicker game than most, but doing a great job. Yeah, at no point have you felt like Tahlequah is not in control of this game. Now, uh, I've been to a few county fairs and a couple goat ropings, and I, I know that uh, things can change pretty quickly. In a uh, so that momentum could shift. But right now, the Tigers are, uh, have this game. I mean, like you said, they're up two scores, but but they just really seem to, to be controlling this. And like we've mentioned a couple times already, um, the Chargers it don't doesn't look like they have the personnel to be doing a lot of substitutions. So as the game goes on, those those young men for a Memorial are gonna get tired. Oh, that the depth that Tahlequah has uh, definitely will will play a factor in this. So here we go, nine guys in the box, run up the middle, of day day to the forty, to the thirty five. He's got one man to beat. Oh, and he's just tripped up at about the thirty three yard line. Another. Big time pickup by Day Day Leathers, and you can starting to see, yes. starting to see the hands on the hips. They're breathing heavy. Uh, they're starting to pour it on them. Hey, keeping track of some games of, uh, of interest, Claremore and Pryor, they're in a dogfight at 14-14, and and uh, Collinsville's back up on top of Sky Took 10 to three. So, uh, a brief glimpse of excitement there as Sky Took was up for a hot minute. So Twins to the left, Day Day to the right. Handoff, trying to get to the edge. Bounces outside. Good block by Kobe Baker. He's to the edge. And he is going to be forced out of bounds. 
See where they where they spot him at about the 25 yard line. Kobe Baker did an excellent job sealing that outside. You know that's a very important showing that not only can he catch and run, but he can block too. And you know Gilbert expects his wide receivers to be able to block. Oh, most definitely. And you see that tonight. And I'm gonna uh, on, along that same line. I want to mention Simeon Armstrong. He he had a pretty good block on the perimeter as well. That was able to. Uh, give uh, give Day Day around the edge, give him the ability to get around the edge there. Handoff inside. He's to the 20, to the 15, to the Look 10, move. on his feet, to the 5. And I want all of you young running backs out there to pay attention to Day Day Leathers. That's why you keep your shoulders low and you keep your feet pumping and driving because they hit him. Looks like he's a little shaken up there, Mark, so he might get a breather here. But you keep those legs going and, and he breaks that tackle. He's, he should have been tackled five yards back here because he keeps his legs chucking and running and, and driving. He's able to pick up an additional five yards, and that's what separates the good backs from the great backs. Hey, he's holding that shoulder, actually, that one he heard a week or two ago. Uh, and if it's that AC joint, which I'm just speculating there, that's an injury that the more it gets injured, the easier it is to injure it, um, if that makes sense. Handoff inside, Carson Ferguson, and he gets the ball down to about the – two and a half, three yard line. Good, I'm a big fan of Carson Ferguson, just in fact of how hard he runs. You know, just 100% all the time. It's 15 on the play clock. Tate in the gun. Twins to the left. Hand off once again inside. And Carson Ferguson it's going to be close, Mark. No signal yet. There it is. Touchdown, Tigers. They say the ball broke the plane before his forward momentum and forward progress was stopped. So Carson comes in. Day-Day does a lot of work, and Carson comes in and punches it in, and that's going to put the Tigers up. Right now, 20 to nothing as Trey Patrick's on for the extra point. Kick is up. And it is good. Good. I think they like that delayed. They're, they're just going for the dramatic. Dramatic, you know, wait yeah. Wait for it, wait for it. Now we're going to give the signal. They know we're up here just ditching to find out if it was good or not. I think they're wanting to know how long I can say. And it's <laughs> good. <laughs> That's the big time. That's what people tune in to watch, are extra points. Ask Cowboys how important extra point and uh, field goals are. <laughs> Do you think they wish they had Dan Bailey? I oh, know he. I, you know, I wish we had Dan Bailey. <laughs> All right, Ashley, so I got some numbers here. It looked like that first offensive series, Day Day rushed for negative one yard. In the second series where we uh, uh, score in the end zone, uh, on the north end zone, 46 yards, and then that uh, touchdown score was 51 yards of offense for Day Day. So he – Probably broke it <laughs> already, and we missed it. That last run he got hurt on is what broke it, because that was a 19-yard run. So let me let me do a little bit of Tudums and Gazintas here real quick. If you ever watched uh, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies, you know what Tudums, Tudums and Gazintas are. Uh, ball sails out of bounds, so they're going to take over at 35-yard line. Well, I tell you what we'll do, Mark. Just in case it's close, his next carry. We'll pretend that's the one that broke it. Well, and, and here, this <laughs> this just tells you how bad I am at math. 40, 46 plus 51 minus one, I believe, is 96. Right. So, so, so we're Jones, still. <laughs> Man, we need you. That, that two-digit math is tough for history teachers. Listen, I've got my shoes off. It's cold. I can't count above 20. Um, All right, handoff inside. Jamoni Jones trying to get the outside. Look at that. Brought down big time in the backfield. Great job there. That is Dylan Parrish shooting in there from the inside linebacker position for a big loss, a loss of four on the play. Good read. Saw the guard pull. He read the guard, shot the gap, and ran him down from behind. Excellent job on his read. That's just, that's just basic assignment football. Uh, great job by Dylan Parrish on that. Tigers are showing blitz here. 
backs out of it. Back to pass, being pressured, rolls to his right. That's Escalera trying to chase him down. He throws it, and he's tripped up, and the ball sails out of bounds. I think they're going to call that inadvertent contact, so no penalty on the play. Uh, that was number 33, Simon Escalera, that forced him to roll out. I don't believe uh, their quarterback uh, in, is uh, happy with the no pass interference call, but young man, that was inadvertent, inadvertent contact, and oh well. So it's going to bring up third and long for the Chargers. Got 10 on the play clock, 4-0-1 to go in half. Tigers up 21-0. Single back, shotgun. Basically trips his left. High snap, back to pass. He looks to his left. It's a screen. Not today. Oh, no, I spoke too soon. He Boy. breaks loose, and he's still driving his feet. I put my head down because I thought we had him tackled at the at the original line of scrimmage or behind, and he, he, did he a wiggled great free. Job right there. He, I, I just knew he was going down. I was trying to be witty. And uh, that's what I get for trying to be funny. And he squirts through the hole there, and uh, he's able to pick up about uh, four yards. So that's going to bring up fourth and about seven, six, maybe seven for the Chargers. So they're in that formation where they can punt or go for it. So we'll see what they do here. Shotgun, single back. He's back to pass. He rolls to his left, throws deep. He's got a step. Oh, and he just, if he doesn't fall down, Mark, he's got a shot at that. And Tigers do a good job bending but not breaking. They're going to take over on downs. Great job defensively by the Tigers. Well, and once again, Ashley, I mean, I know, I know Memorial's down 21-0. And I know they may not have the personnel, but I just – and I hate second-guessing a coach. I mean, he, he's with his team five days a week. He's seen them for hours on end in practice. He knows what they got. And maybe, maybe that punt game just is not there, but I don't, I don't see – I don't see why we're getting – why they continue going forward down. And actually right there, the, the umpire, I believe, who was standing in the memorial huddle and threw a flag – Unsportsmanlike conduct is the call against Memorial. You got to wonder if frustration setting mm -hmm. in down there. Well, and, and that's what I mean. If, if people were listening to us earlier in the game when I said we've got to jump out ahead and we've got to stay on them, it's things like that um, that you can see that we know are, are prone to happen sometimes with some of the teams in our conference uh, is this idea that if, if they get frustrated um, – you, you really start to see the wheels come off and that that was on their quarterback who was out on who was out on defense that play as you can see he's still quite animated over there on the sideline so yeah that's clearly frustration playing a factor uh in that so so Tahlequah takes advantage of that empty backfield five wide receivers and toss to the left and that's incomplete Good coverage by Memorial mm -hmm. on the play. Not a very good throw as he was pressured, had to throw that off his back foot. Pass intended for Simeon Armstrong. So it's good to see Day Day back on the field. So whatever he was wrong, he's probably shaking it off. Had a little mustard and pickle juice, so he's I'm sure That's he's right. fine. Actually, he's seven yards away from tying the record and eight away from breaking the single season uh, rushing record held by Kyle Lucas in about 2015, I think we and we that gathered. was a pretty decent quarterback. You guys remember yes. watching Kyle Lucas play? Hard nose running. There he goes. He's to the 20, down to the 18, 19 yard line. Ashley, that tied it right there. That so was seven Day -Day yards. Leathers has it now tied we're going to say unofficially but unofficially yeah. tied the all-time rushing record you got to say unofficial because as everyone that is watching us now knows i am terrible at, at math <laughs> so i'm sitting here trying to count um, there's a handoff and we're going to back that up because now he's <laughs> he lost a few <laughs> yards so now he's not tied anymore all right so yeah now we, we now we do subtraction so loss of about two on the play 
It's going to bring up third and five for the Tigers. So he's he's got to he's got to get either two yards to tie three to break it. Here we go. Twins to the right. Shotgun. Johnny football to the left. Back to pass. He's got a man across the middle. It's Simeon Armstrong. Oh, just off his hands. And I thought, I thought that Jackson Jones was going to be able to field the tip on that. But just out of reach. So it's incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Tigers. Boy, how many oh, passes? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. That's turnover on downs. I, I'm sorry. I was a playoff. How many passes has that happened tonight? Hit a guy, uh, you know, we had to jump forward or just overthrowing him. Uh, it's there. It's there. We just got to we just got to contact on those on those things. So Tigers move the ball, and then they stall out at the 21 yard line. So they're not able to punch it in the red zone. So uh, Memorial does the good job of stopping them. So Memorial comes out single back gun, virtually trips to the right. Fakes the handoff inside, trying to hit the seam route, and does. Nice catch and decent tackle there by the Tigers. About a, about a pickup of about 18 on the play, but there is a penalty on the field. It's in the vicinity of holding. Nope. That's an ineligible receiver, nope. Mark. So you got a lineman downfield, so that negates a big-time pickup. And, and as a coach, that's just – that is beyond frustrating. Very frustrating, especially, especially with what Memorial's having to deal with. You know, you get a – Get an unsportsmanlike, you get some big runs called back, and now that. Um, so it backs them up five. It's going to be first and 15, replay the down. And that was Quayshawn Leathers on the on the tackle previously. Uh, but I guess the penalty will negate his tackle. So a minute and 44 to go in the half. Shotgun formation. Rolls to his left. Trying to get upfield. And he's brought down. Good tackle there, and they're yeah. going to call that a late hit. And it was a good tackle there, uh, and then they, they piled on just a little late there. And he's down, Ashley. That was Fuentes, I believe. Was that 44? Is that yeah, Johnny? I believe it was Johnny Football. So he's rushed, being coming off the field there and being spoken to in a, in a harsh manner. I believe he was tackled. Tackle was made by tackle Goodnight. Tackle was made by Goodnight. He was down. Goodnight. And then mm -hmm. Fuentes, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think that there was anything nefarious. But It was bang, bang. I mean, it was it was bang, bang. And it's it's hard uh, It's hard sometimes once you get your momentum going down, uh, especially if it's a bang, bang type of play. It's, it's hard not to do that. I hope that young man's all right. Guys, a score update. Pryor putting it on Claremore right now, 28 to 14. Holy cow. That is a big time game that we're going to be watching. As you know, we travel to Claremore uh, next week, and, and we're all cheering for Pryor right now. We Go are. Tigers, huh? I'm a Pryor Tigers fan right now. And, the and Tigers eat zebras. That's and I learned that. I went to Africa one time, and I was told in detail it's not zebras, by the way, zebras. I was oh, really? corrected countless times that the proper pronunciation of a zebra is a zebra. So tigers are known to eat them. But really in Africa, there's no tigers, there's lions. So I yeah. try to clarify that lions, but you know, we're trying to make it work for our audience. Same thing, Go right? With lions and tigers, I mean, hey, and bears, big cats, oh that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, Wizard of Oz reference for you youngsters. <laughs> Owen tells us he knows. He said, I watch TV. I got the YouTube at home. All right, so here we go. With that penalty is going to make it first down for the Chargers. Minute 27, clock is running. Shotgun formation. Man in motion. Fakes the jet sweep, keeps it up the middle. And he is rowed down. That's number 50, Big Bear Thompson. But I guess during senior night they called him Little Bear Thompson. I think that is what he called him. I imagine dad is Big Bear. Nonetheless, there's Tigers and Lions and now Bear Thompson on That's the right. tackle. See, see what I did there? See how I made that work? I'm impressing these youngsters with my, my ability to tie in things there. 
And uh, clearly false start by the uh, No, they're going to call that on Tahlequah. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, offsides by, by the Tigers. I don't know if you noticed, uh, they fired that NFL ref for I missing did. that false start call. Week six. And in the article I read actually said they usually wait to do firings after a two-year period. But uh, I, I guess that official had missed a couple calls in which the NFL's big-time money, so they got rid of that guy. There's a hole. Jones, getting to the outside. You could just see just a flash of that speed, Mark. Uh, Tigers do a good job of, of corralling him, but they're going to pick up first down, and they go into a hurry-up offense as, you know, 36 seconds remain in the first half. Trying to hurry up. Clock's down to 30. And now Memorial is going to call timeout. After they let about three or four seconds run off the clock there. 30 seconds to go in the first half. Tigers are up 21, Chargers zero. It's a good crowd here tonight, Ashley, in, in, uh, in spite of the, the chilly weather. Which I've got to say, I know there's lots of people, and I'm probably outnumbered. They love that summertime, but I'll take this every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I love cool weather, cold weather. I like snow. Well, we're in the wrong state for snow. Yeah. But I will say that I'm built for cold weather. Me too. You know, I, I prepare for it all year long. That's right. You know, um, I, I try to try to eat as many carbohydrates as I can. That's right. You know. That way I can keep that thermostat at the house at about 67. Right now, I just have ours off. So I woke up this morning, it was about 65 inside the house. It was nice. It was real nice, Clark. Real nice. We generally have blankets, and you can see our breath when we speak. But I read somewhere online that it's healthier to sleep in a cold room, so that's my excuse. Shotgun formation, trips to left. He's back to pass. He's still back to pass, and he's hit. Oh, nearly Almost intercepted pitched. by Quayshawn Leathers, but a great job by Blake Korn pressuring him and forcing that bad throw. Uh, good job defensively there by the Tigers. Going to bring second and ten for the Chargers. Empty set, five wide, back to pass, looking deep, will route, and the pass is thrown just a bit too long, and he's unable to catch it. Looked like Goodnight kind of got turned around there, got his hips going the wrong way. and Looked inside, and, then, and uh, yeah, that was just being out of position there. But then that ball sailed on him, so it's going to bring up. We have third and ten for the Chargers. Nineteen seconds to go in the first half. That Collinsville Sky took it's ten three at the half. So Sky took hanging with them. Well, actually, that's a big time rivalry game. They're only separated by about seven or eight miles. So those two teams, they were going to duke it out. That hit the turf right there. Yeah, incomplete. This is going to bring up fourth and long uh, for the Chargers. They'll go for it. Yeah, why not? That's Zach Fuentes and Cole Goodnight on the coverage. Don't really have anything to lose right here for the Chargers. You went for it on your own 30 earlier. Why not go for it on your own 49, 48? Exactly. Back to pass, trips to his left, looks to his left, steps up, throws a big time pass down the middle, and that is going to be That's picked. picked. Trey Patrick. Off. No, they're saying incomplete. Incomplete pass, which, you know, actually works out better for us because we get the yeah. ball way up here as opposed down there. But good job defensively by Trey Patrick. Well, now do you take a shot here, seven seconds and, and a couple timeouts. Why not? Why not? I mean, I say keep your foot on the gas. I mean, Absolutely. there's still a lot of football to play. 
Um, so Gilbert's got his stick and he's drawing the play in the dirt. I think they got it. So here we go, a little Sandlot football. I doubt we'll see the hook and ladder of the Statue of Liberty, but boy, it'd be neat to see it. It Maybe would. a double wide receiver pass reverse. The annexation of Puerto Rico. Uh, and there's going to be a false start. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with this tonight. It's offsides on Memorial, so that's going to move them up five yards. So first and five for the Tigers. You can see Memorial's back in a cover prevent, I guess you would call it. I would be surprised to see a little inside draw here. You know, they're gonna run, mm -hmm. they're gonna run in a prevent defense, but we're gonna run five wide. Empty backfield. Rolls to his right. Throws, caught, 35, to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, 15, 10, five, and he's forced out of bounds. And the oh, no time. And the clock just runs out. They're gonna mark him just short. He tried to reach out for the pylon and was forced out at the one, and that's going to bring us to the end of the first half. What a what an excellent play, Mark. Hey, what a what a play drawn up by Gilbert there at the end uh, to spring one of the fastest guys we have on the offense uh, and get him some space. Great job. Great job. It's been all Tahlequah in the first half as they're up. They lead the Chargers 21 to nothing. Uh, they're pitching a shutout here, Mark. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, like we said, um, uh, the Tigers have pretty much controlled all this. Sorry, folks, we're locked in here. Only I'm the only one around here knows how to open a doorknob. I tell you what, Owen Martin and Celia Santana. Um, but you just got to grab the knob and turn it. It's science. I know it can be complicated, but that's what you got to do. But anyway. Uh, so where are the, we at on day day watch? Uh, right now, Ashley, he is uh, two yards away from Ty and three yards away from breaking the single season record of 1,440 yards of rushing uh, in a season. So and folks, so, stay with us because we guarantee. Well, I shouldn't guarantee anything, but I like <laughs> our odds and the probability that that record will be broken here in the second half. So uh, we're going to take us a break here and let you enjoy. Uh, the Orange Express, and we are not going to tell them to turn it down. Rather, we're going to tell them, I don't know if it's Little John or what, but they get turned up. So That's right. turn them up and enjoy our, our band. And, people, and, folks, we promise not to put a screen over the screen like we did last week. So, uh, like Ashley said, hang around, get some Cheetos, come back, and we will be back after halftime.
They are set apart by wearing white plumes, and our senior color guard members are using flags from the show from years past. Please, please help us honor our seniors in the final home marching performance of your award-winning Orange Express.
He is accompanied by his brother, Pablo Nava, and sister, Fabiola Nava. He received excellent ratings on solo and ensemble, member of the band for eight years, and received outstanding sophomore brass player. In the future, he plans on attending Northeastern State University of Vocal and Instrumental Music to be a teacher for the Orange Express. He wants to make a difference. Taya Wright Kirk. She is accompanied by Miss Maybelline Shoemate and Mr. Clint Wright Kirk. She has been in band for seven years. She has received superior ratings for solo. She made all district and second round all state. She has been a member of the jazz band for three years and basketball band for two years. In the future, she plans to attend Northeastern State University and study psychology. Alex Rodriguez. He is accompanied by Mr. Carlos and Jamie Rodriguez. He has been in band for eight years, trumpet section leader and manager of the boys' soccer team. In the future, he plans on attending Northeastern State University and pursue a degree in sports marketing. Kaya Timothy. She is accompanied by Mr. John Timothy and Mrs. Vanessa Timothy. She was an all-district band member for two years, rise for four years, Educational Talent Search for four years, received one on solo and ensembles, and NHS member. In the future, she plans to attend Northeastern State University. Luis Vasquez. He is accompanied by Mr. and Mrs. Vasquez. He has been a member of the EDBDA All District Band and received numerous superior ratings on solos and ensembles. In the future, he plans to attend NSU or OU. Alexis White. She is accompanied by Jerry and Brian Smith. She has been in band throughout high school. In the future, she plans on attending NSU or OU and pursue a bachelor's degree. Seth Wyndham. She is accompanied by Mr. Glenn Wyndham and Mr. Tara Wyndham and his grandparents, Terry and Laverta Bohannon. She has been a member of the band for eight years, member of NHS. Selected as senior favorite in 2018-2019 Orange Express team. He recently began an internship with Baker's Law Firm. His future plans include attending OU or NSU and pursuing a degree in law. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 band senior class.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back after halftime. Uh, we have uh, got our crew back. Actually, we're missing two camera ladies. Uh, apparently, there was a lot of, of fun going on at halftime, and I don't know where they went. But either way, we've still got Hunter Burchett, Owen Martin, and uh, Celia Santana. We're looking for Aubrey Gresham and Cheyenne Arenas, so if you might see them, send them this way. Ashley, what do you think? Well, hey, I like it. I like it. It's uh, We get the ball to the start of the half and can put the pedal to the metal and let's finish this out and start getting ready for Claremore. It's, but, you know, let's not put the cart before the horse. You know, I, I'm right. well aware of that, that we have a half football to play. Let's uh, not uh, count them chickens before they hatch. Exactly. Eggs. Exactly. No. Huh? Hey, before the kick, I want to do a few shout-outs here. We got uh, – Walter and Patty Hicks watching tonight from home. Coach Johnny Dyson watching on the 55-inch TV screen. How you doing, Coach? And uh, we have the Tibbetts family. Kelly Tibbetts at home with a sick child, so uh, welcome to them. That's all I got right now. We still probably are being watched by people now. They're in the air between Minneapolis and Tulsa, Oklahoma, so um, we have that going as well. So, Mark, it looks like they're lined up for the onside, but you got to have four players on at least both sides of you there. So, let's we'll see what they're going to do here. And there's a, there's a kick. Whistles are blown. Obviously, something went awry. Not sure what, what happened, but I never really heard the whistle for play to be – blown to start with so that's probably what the deal was so they the, set the ball back up on the left hash classic yeah. case of jumping the gun so it looks classic. like they're gonna retry this i like that so looking for the the onside i guess there's a whistle for play there he goes there's a a, a high pooch kick over to the sideline taken at about the 30 takes makes one man miss and picks up about Four yards on the return. Uh, forced out of bounds at the 32-yard line. I believe so, that's Bradley Pruitt on the return. Nice job there, feeling it right there on the edge. Shout out to uh, Coach Brett Bardell and his wife April. They're watching, uh, watching tonight. Also, we have uh, Rod Robertson of the Rod Robertson Band fame. Uh, he's watching from Cherry Tree, Oklahoma. Rod, I hope that water's... Clear and cool coming out of that faucet down there. You guys have had some water issues lately. All right, so Tigers take the field at their own 32-yard line. Twins to the right, Day-Day to the right. Johnny Football to the left as the up back, Tate quarterback. There's a handoff inside, Day-Day to the outside. Steps up. Mark, he's going to make us earn this record, is he not? That's right. And that right there. That's a gain of about two. That's a tie. Two so, yards to tie. So on the opening play of the second half, Day Day Leathers has now tied the all-time rushing record for Tahlequah Tigers, again set by Kyle Lucas with 1440 in about 2015. Well, remember, he tied it in the first half and then, uh, and then lost yardage, so. So here we go again. Hand off once again, Day Day. And that's going to break it for sure. Congratulations to that young man with a pickup of about three on the play. If my math is right, that should put him at least 106 for the game. Yeah, so, was that a gain of four, Ashley? I'm trying well, to look. It's going to be, it's gonna be yep. third and four, so two carries at six yards. Yep, so, yeah, he's, he's broken it by a yard. So he's at uh, 1,441 yards on the year unofficially uh, because, like we said, I've already proved right now that I'm not the mathematician. Issue with the ball, apparently. Got to get on those ball boys down there, see what's going on. I got the inside track on that. Well, I thought I saw Tom Brady down there a while ago letting some air out. I don't know. That's, that's Tom Brady, a.k.a. Wyatt Stevens and the deflate gate. That's right. Wyatt, Wyatt and Singe and the ball boys are down there letting air out. We got another ball boy tonight, Cody Hayes, uh, going to do some fill-in duty next week. Looks like Tigers now jumped off sides, but let's see where they drawn off. Nope, they are going to call it against us. So that's going to back us up five again. Timing of those penalties. You want to come out and – 
and look sharp, and that's not what we're doing right now. You're kind of sputtering, you know. So, change personnel. Trying to get the call from the sideline. Clear and Gilbert signaling it in. Doubles package, single back, shotgun. Day Day to the right. There's a snap. He rolls to his right. Looking across. Oh, he's got Kobe Baker wide open at the 50 to the 45, 40, 35, 30, to the 25, down to the 29, 19 yard line. What a fantastic catch by Kobe Baker. Mark, he was wide open. They have been just gutting them on the inside post and that seam route. And the, he looks off the safety. He looks off the cornerback. And Kobe Baker is wide open for a big time, big time reception for the Tigers. Moving the ball all the way down inside the red zone. First and 10 Tigers at the 19. I mean, Ashley Baker is fast. So once he gets his hands on the ball, and secures that thing. He is fast. There goes Day Day to the edge, trying to get around the edge. He does to the 15. He's to the 10, and he skirts out of bounds at about the 12. I'm sorry, about the seven yard line. That's going to be good enough for another first down as he adds to his record breaking season. So first and goal for the Tigers from about the seven. Twins to the right, handoff inside. Makes one man miss. Tries to make second man miss and he's still being wrapped up. They still can't bring him down. Finally is brought down at about the 16 but they're gonna give him forward progress down to the 10. So loss of about three on the play. So first and goal, second and goal from the 10 for the Tigers. Maybe we have equipment issue there with the, uh, with a charger, the, uh, the umpire Yep, sit him to the sideline. I see a Charger coach grab the grab the young man's helmet and take off running to the equipment bag. So, so twins to the right, Day Day and Johnny Football to the left. Man in motion, fakes a jet sweep inside slant. Jackson Jones and there's yep. going to be a good call for pass interference on the on Memorial as really more was a defensive holding to be correct as he was trying to get his trying to get his hands up and he had his arms out and wouldn't let Jackson get that hands up because otherwise uh, he makes that catch. That's a touchdown play right there. That's right. That's right. That's a, that's so a good call. So they are going to call pass interference against the Chargers. That's going to that's gonna move the ball half the distance to the goal. Should put it up to about the five-yard line. Should replay the down. As you know, in high school sports, that's not an automatic first down. Very few penalties in high school sports are automatic first downs, Mark. A little useless bit of trivia for you. Well. Or not trivia, but I guess just information. <laughs> Hand off inside. Day Day cuts around the edge and dives mm, I down. I thought he had to, it. Oh, close to about the two-yard line. It's going to bring up third and goal for the Tigers. Knocking on the door. Like to see him punch it in right here. I mean, like to go up four scores. Not, not that you're. I don't want to say we're not concerned. I mean, anything could happen. It's football, but, but you, you definitely want to want to see that. We've got a somebody, the official, talking to Gilbert about something. Gilbert goes ahead and calls the timeout. I think he was just telling the referee that he was going to call timeout, but he was letting that clock run tick tick down I think yep. he's he's working the clock early on and now they're talking to the referee let well, him know how many timeouts he's got so timeout taken there's uh 853 to go in the third quarter Tigers on top and threatening to score 21 nothing at the two yard line well our pitch our uh, defense pitching a shutout right now playing excellent they have that bend but no break mentality yep. today 
Uh, you know, they're, they're giving up some yards, and they turn around, fight right back, and, and they're getting off the field and, and letting the offense be on the field tonight. So that's, fan, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, and you know, you know Coach Wilson, Coach Reeves, uh, Coach Ikanowski, the other. I'm going to leave somebody out. I shouldn't even name names. But you know the defensive staff, uh, they, they want to see that goose egg up there when the clock strikes zero after the fourth quarter. They, they want to see that shutout. So um, be nice for the offense to just kind of kind of hit that nail in the coffin a little harder right here and then uh, see what our defense can do. Hand off once again inside, Day Day all touchdown. alone, touchdown, Tigers. If I'm not mistaken, that is now his 18th touchdown on the season as he's now the single, se single season rushing leader for the Tigers. From two yards out, Day Day strikes. It's been one of those special years for the Tigers. Trey Patrick set to kick. Try the extra point, excuse me. It's been perfect thus far. And it is, con and it continues, kick is good. I'm gonna say it's good before they put their arms up. So, Tahlequah Tigers are up. There is a flag, Ashley. 28 nothing, there is a penalty on the field. Let's see what, what the call is. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Tigers. And it it will be uh, it will be on the kickoff. And I don't know I don't know who it was on, Ashley, but I I could all the way in the press box here, Coach Gilbert yelling to tell Hunter Smith to go in. Uh, sophomore quarterback, which won't be quarterbacking on the kickoff, but whoever got that unsportsmanlike call on him. I guess is usually on the kickoff uh, team, and they won't be this time. And there's number eight trotting there out there, is. sophomore. Oh, I've got another six-year-old visitor, folks. What is it? All right, so they're going to back them up 15, so they're going to have to kick from now the 20-yard line. Uh, so Memorial looks... You know, unless the wheels fall off on this kickoff, looks to get pretty decent field position, uh, assuming they filled it and et cetera. So the Tigers kicking from the north to the south. Memorial back to, to receive. Referee's ready. There's a whistle. There's a kick. High kick. And it looks like he's going to be taking about the 40-yard line. He's to the 45. Cuts to his left. Around the edge, he's got a lane. He's to the 50, and oh, he's tripped up by Dylan Parrish. And he's brought down at the 41-yard line. He tripped him up at about the 50, and he was able to scamper another nine yards or so. Potentially a touchdown saving tackle by Dylan Parrish. So, uh, no, they're gonna mark him, they're gonna mark him back to about the 43-yard line. So Memorial starts off inside Tiger territory. 43-yard line, 8.43 to go in the third. Tigers up 28-0. So twins or doubles to the right, single back, shotgun formation. There's a snap. Handoff inside, Jamoni Jones. He gets up to about the 37-yard line. That's a pickup of about five on the play. A whole host of Tigers in on the tackle. I'm back, Ashley. All right. Mr. Bathroom <laughs> duty called for the six-year-old. <laughs> so, here we go. Twins to the right. Shotgun formation. Up back also to the right. Handoff inside Jamai Jones. He has a lane. One man to beat. He's got him. To there the 10. Five. Shutout. Touchdown, Chargers. Never touched. Great inside zone blocking. It looks like the defensive linemen there are talking to each other. I think they shot the wrong gap there, and that opened it up. And he was able to, to have a nice little 30-something yard scamper into the end zone. So Memorial strikes back with 8.05 to go in a third. Uh, it looks like they may end up – can't really tell what they're setting up for if this is that, some of that gimmick football, which you know I am not a fan of. <laughs> 
My the my guess gate. is if they don't punt, how can they kick a field goal? But it looks like they're going to try and kick a field goal. Well, I think the kicker actually forgot that he was going to kick because he was <laughs> a, he was the last guy on the field as they ran the swinging gate. So there's a snap. There's a kick. And it's good. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to harp on the swinging gate for a little bit. It is probably one of the most useless formations in football. And literally, the only reason I can even think of anyone would run the swinging gate is just to force the other team to spend a little bit of time to prepare for it. Exactly. That, that's it. I, I cannot. I've never seen it. Uh, as a matter of fact, my high school ran the swinging gate, and it was confusing to our players half the time. I mean, that's not what you want, right? You want things uh, – what, what do they say? A clear mind runs fast. Absolutely. That's and a so, Ruffin McNeil. That's right. New defensive coordinator for OU. So, so Memorial showing some signs of life here as they as they as they strike back twenty eight seven. Yeah, I'm, I've never seen that that formation have a lot of success. I've seen them march out there, and then I see them throw it quickly if the defense doesn't respond to the swinging gate, you know. And then even with that, I haven't seen it be very successful. No. But I, I just I'm just not a big fan of gimmick football. I'm more of an old fashioned uh, smash mouth type guy. So all them whippersnappers in the swinging gate. That's right. So there's onside, fielded by the up by the middle. Up Lyman. That's uh, that's good night. Good night. Number 11. That'll be good field position right there, Ashley. So Tiger's going to take over at about the 47-yard line. So I don't know if I told you unofficially right now, Day-Day's sitting at 121 yards on the night, so. 121, so two touchdowns. Uh, That's, yeah. you know, and it's only third quarter. And a hurt shoulder, and he's still going. So, All right, here we go. Twins to the right, Dede to the right, Johnny to the left. Hand off inside Dede, cuts around the corner, up inside. Uh, pickup of about two on the play. It's going to bring up second and about eight for the Tigers. So Johnny comes out and Zach comes in. So One number off, ten pounds difference. Leave it to us, Ashley, to to, to jump on the uh, the swinging gate, and then I get a text from the one and only uh, Eric Jones saying that he scored a two point conversion as center on swinging gate in high school. It's the only formation that the center is eligible for a pass, which I can say I've never seen. Anything other than just swinging gate and then kick a field goal. That's a that's a very interesting point right there. Hey, Day Day goes out to the outside, just showcases his speed as the defensive end or that inside linebacker couldn't tell which one it was who was trying to run him down from behind, but could not catch him. Uh, but a decent pickup. It's going to bring up third and short uh, for the Tigers. I hear Gilbert yelling. He is fired up. Yeah. By something. So handoff. Day Day trying to bounce to the outside. He gets, oh, sold up. Spins. Dragging. Oh, he, Ashley. Mark, he was dragging him like a grown man. He was. And then another guy ran up and speared him in the head That's with the helmet, his helmet. The helmet. Yeah. Could have been if we were in a, a review play of targeting. But, you know. Yeah, so, that's but a, that was good enough for a Tiger first down. So, first and 10 for the Tigers at about the 42 and a half. Twins to the right, Day Day to the left, Johnny to the left. I say Johnny, Zach. <laughs> motion. That's Simeon in motion. Fakes the jet sweep. Inside post. He's got Jackson Jones there he is. to the 10 5. Touchdown, Tigers. Now, that's a beautiful. Beautiful pass. He's got time. 
He doesn't throw off his back foot. Inside post to Jackson. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Cover one, and they exploited it. That was a beautiful pass right there, Ashley. Good route by Jones. Good pass by Christian. Good blocking up front. I mean, that that's just hit him in stride. That, that right there. If that doesn't make your neck swell up, I don't think nothing will. Nope. Yep. A deer hunting analogy, actually. Gotcha. gotcha, sir. The rut deer hunting. Come on now. Wes Jackson, if I believe that, that is, is that his second touchdown reception? Is that Jackson's second? I believe it is. So kicks up and good, so he's perfect. I believe that personal foul penalty uh, previously was against Trey Patrick as Hunter Smith ended up kicking kicking so he's got him lined out now Gilbert even on a great drive look at that coaching them all the way off the field don't be comfortable keep grinding so after the the Tigers we have had the ball offensively six times tonight and day day is now at 131 yards not a bad day for that young man Tigers are set to kick. Up big, 35-7 here in the third quarter. 6.04 remaining. Kicks to the left hash. Fielded. Fumbled. Still He's still trying to get it. He picks it up about 15, and he is stuck at the 14-yard line. Maybe even as far back as the 13-yard line. As two chargers tried to catch the ball, causes them to fumble it. Then it, then it's like rolling around like, like a greased pig out there. I'm telling you. You ever play that game, Ashley, where you take a watermelon and you put Vaseline all over it and throw it in a pool and try to try to get it from one end to the I'm other? I'm not sure what y'all do with the Jordan. <laughs> no, that, that was at Westville. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never played that game. <laughs> but I'm, I'm intrigued. Continue on. <laughs> uh, it was actually uh, – I've only played that once, but it was after, like, my 12-year-old baseball season was over. And we're at the pool, and they took out a watermelon and put Vaseline on that sucker, threw it in the pool, and we, we had to get into the teams and try to get it from one end to the other before we could eat it. I got gotcha. you. It was weird. <laughs> Most to the left. He's back to pass. He's pressured. He throws it deep and long and incomplete. Over at hand, he was covered by Quayshawn Leathers. Good coverage by the Tigers. So it was going to bring up second and ten for the Tigers. I'm sorry, second and ten for the Chargers. Shotgun formation, single back, handoff, runs down the edge. Great defense right there by the Tigers. Now the Tigers trying to strip the ball. That's Blake Korn, number 53, leading the way. What a game he's had tonight. Absolutely. Now they're going to also say that Dylan Parrish jumped in there on the tackle. 53, Blake was the first one to make contact with him, and then he tried to strip, and he was brought down by the rest of that Tiger defense. Gun formation. Handoff inside, Jamani Jones, he cuts to the left. He's got a lane. Here comes the Tiger, stiff arm, and then he's forced out of bounds. Good job there by number 23, Quayshawn Leathers. You know, he puts the old hand in Quayshawn's face, and he doesn't let that slow him down, and he rides him all the way out of bounds. That's going to bring up fourth and about four for the Chargers, and it appears that they are going to punt the ball. So back deep punt are the Chargers. He oh. bobbles snap, and he just falls down on top of it. So, Tigers, big time. 
They're gonna now get the ball at the nine yard line. So great field position as he he just he just fumbled the snap. Yeah. It was a good snap. Yep. He must have had that greased watermelon like <laughs> you're talking about, Mark. That's right. So That's right. It is really slick. I mean, it's hard to get that watermelon well, I can imagine back and forth. if you had a wet watermelon and Vaseline <laughs> on it, I imagine that it would be difficult to, to hold. Well, now I'm, I'm a little self-conscious, Ashley, because apparently that's the only things that we do in Westville, and I'm a little, I'm a little wondering now what other things that I grew up with in Westville thinking was normal, but it really wasn't. Well, does it matter if it's seedless or not? I don't think so, although I prefer the seedless. So, handoff to Day Day to the left, and uh, Tigers were pulling the guards. It's generally a power type play, and uh, I'm sorry, that was Carson Ferguson on the carry, not Day Day. Excuse me, and uh, big time loss as they blitz the house again when they're loading nine guys in the box. So it's going to bring up first and goal from the 16. So that's a seven yard loss for the Tigers. The shotgun. Back to pass. Looking. He's got a man over the middle. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Oh, hit him right in the hands. That would have been big time right there. That's Simeon Armstrong on the uh, intended receiver. Goodness sakes. I mean, put it right there, right over the linebacker and safety. Safety had sucked up. And, they, you know, when you run cover one, I mean, the idea is that your safety is going to help over the top, but here he is peeking inside, and they're taking advantage of that. They're attacking that with that inside post, and it's it's there practically every play. So uh, missed opportunity there for the Tigers. Looks like they're running again, running the fade route in the back corner to number 11, Cole Goodnight. Oh, and he just can't hang on to it. Uh, coverage wasn't bad there, double covered there by the Chargers. The fade to the to the right corner there. So that's going to bring up fourth down. I'm we'll sorry, run the field. turnover on downs. No, we're going to run the field goal team out there. I'll it's fourth and 16. So field goal unit. I thought I saw Dylan Parrish running out there. So that's, excuse me, that's usually my clue that he's on defense. There's the kick. Wait for the drama. There it is, all day, and it's good. Ashley, was that a was that like a thirty? Oh yeah, that's a that's thirty-four, thirty-five yarder field goal. Decent field goal. That would have been good for forty. Hey, that's uh, that's big time right there. You know, having a good day kicking. Speaking of one hundred percent days on mm -hmm. extra points. You know, speaking of of goals. You know, they don't just have goals for the offensive defense they have special team goals as well you know obviously they want to win but they want no penalties on special teams no bad snaps or block kicks they don't want to allow a big play and they want a hundred percent pat or point after touchdowns and right now they they're hitting those goals mark yeah they are and it's nice to know you got you got a kicker in trey patrick that can connect from that distance i mean that they could have backed him up a little more uh, and that would have been through So the Tigers at three, 38 sevens to score, 413 to go in the third. Back to kick from north to south. Bounces at the 20. They're just gonna stare, oh, and it bounces out of bounds. I thought it might get the lucky bounce and bounce back to the inside, but it goes out of bounds, so that will be a penalty on the Tigers. I guess when you, you do that, you kick to that edge, you just concede to the fact that you're good with them getting the ball at the 35. At the 35, yes. There's a lot of de debate in football nowadays about special teams, about the kickoff, you know, and limiting the injuries uh, that, that can occur, you know, when you have a guy run a full tilt on a, on a kickoff and, is, and just blowing up another player. Uh, so... It's not surprising to see more of those sideline type kicks to help eliminate a lot of that. Yep. Well, and then the uh, NFL, they've instituted where they can't have a running start on the uh, kickoff. 
So back to pass, throws, number 15 catches, and he's brought down immediately, but that's gonna be about an eight yard. Uh, he stands up and signals a first and 10, but I'm gonna not, have not to close. tell that young man that eight yards is not enough for the first down. No, we get 10 in this league. Yep. Uh, that was uh, Simon Escalera and Trey Patrick on the tackle right there. So some scores around the league. Claremore and Pryor, it's all knotted up at 28 to 28. So hand off to Jamonic Jones. He tries left side, not That's going to lose there. a little bit. And it looks like he may lose a half a yard. Isaac Strain and Bear Thompson in on tackle. Actually, I want to give a shout out to uh, our cross country uh, men and women are at Edmond tonight. Tomorrow is uh, cross country state, so we've got several runners there running. And because of that, Coach Miller is not here as the uh, as the public address announcer. So Sergeant Marcus Sams is down in the in the uh, first story of the press box announcing tonight. He's doing a great job, too. Doing a good job. We can hear him nice and loud and clear. We do miss Coach Miller, but we know he's getting them lined out and going to do a good job there with the cross country. Mark, if you see me running, you probably should run, too, because someone's probably chasing me. That's right. That's right. And I don't have to outrun whatever's chasing us. I just got to outrun the slowest person. Absolutely. It's good advice when you're running from bears. That's right. So handoff inside. And it's going to be close. They'll give it to him because we don't measure. 50. We don't measure in this league. One one official has it on the other side of the 45, and this one has it marked short, <laughs> and they're going to go ahead and give him the first down. So good enough for first and 10. Mark, I will say this. I did get in a foot pursuit um, last week, and I haven't been in a foot pursuit since the early 2000s. <laughs> um, felt like my lungs were on fire. I had shin splints and a sore ankle. So I'm going to try – to not do that very much often. Hey. Husky by the Tigers. That's Cole Goodnight reading that route all the way. Nice interception right there and about six yards on the return. He read it the whole way, Mark. Well, you could you could see that coming from the get-go. You knew uh, that Goodnight had that red, and he was going to – if he held on to it, it was going to be money. Force of habit, when I saw him get the interception, you notice I yelled Oski. And some yep. of the, someone asked me one time, what does Oski mean? And it's, a, it's kind of an elusive definition, but I've always heard that it means our side caught it. Mm -hmm. O-S-C-I or Oski. So if someone wants to prove me wrong, feel free, because I'd really like to know what it really means, but that's what we're going to go with. Handoff inside. He runs to the 35, down to the 30. 433 yard line depends where the spot is 33 yard line pickup of about seven on the play Carson Ferguson now running the ball Simeon Armstrong comes off limping a little bit Twins to the left, both tailbacks to the left. Tate takes snap, hands off inside. Carson running hard, runs up the middle. He's met for no gain on the play. He's going to bring up third down for the Tigers. You know, up to this point, the Tigers have played a, I'm not going to say flawless, but, I mean, it's been a, it's been a good, uh, well-executed game. Pretty much all facets of the game. Absolutely. It's, a, it's what you want uh, as you prepare, prepare for your last game of the season uh, to come out here. And this is one of those games that they could have easily overlooked. Uh, hand off to Carson Ferguson. He's going to have enough for yes, a sir. first down. So keep the chains moving. But this is one of those games where, you you know, Tigers were are expected to win, expected to win big. But it's one of those things that they could get caught looking ahead to Claremore. You know, and, yes. and it's take it one game at a time. Take it one game at a time and, and uh, don't put the cart before the horse. That's right. Shotgun formation, whistle on the field. 
going to be timeout. Oh, I'm sorry, equipment timeout. Equipment issue. Actually, it's a uh, chain issue, Ashley. On the other side, we were, I don't know if we had a kink in the chain or what, but the chain gang was experiencing some technical difficulties. Well, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Hand off inside. Picks up of about two on the play. He earned every foot of those two yards. So second and eight for the Tigers. And that end of the third right there, Ashley. So fourth quarter, Tigers on top, 38 to seven. And it looks like the Tigers have a lot of the second string guys in, getting a lot of good playing time right here. It's good to get, get these guys some rest and also get these other guys some experience. That's right. As we uh, one quarter away and bring on the Zebras. <laughs> bring on the Zebras. Every time you say that, Ashley, I think I'm watching an episode of Peppa Pig. There you go. Oh, Ashley. The dude just missed the first State Bank field goal. And who is that? I'm trying to look. Is that? That was the closest one this yeah. season. They just said the name, and I couldn't quite pick it up. But I'm telling you what, he's came the closest yet. I mean, it just missed that horizontal bar. What do they win? I, I didn't hear what they win if they actually make it. You know, I don't know. Um, Money? Not Chick-fil-A for life? <laughs> this is Tahlequah. It should be like Hilltop for life, right? Ooh. Fried chicken, pizza pockets, crispitos. Buy two bangs, get one free. Oh, Some yeah. Three. Ice cold and Dr. Pepper. Inside. Decent pickup there, Carson Ferguson. Ashley, do you remember that restaurant? It's now Dr. Barrett's Chiropractic Office. Was it Bandy's? Bandy's? Bandy's had some of the best burgers in town right there. But then they got into some weird hours. You know, it was kind of like, when is Bandy's open? Yeah. And then when they were open, you like, whether it was lunchtime or dinner time or not, you swung in there and got you a burger. Yeah. Oh, they were good. It's just like, hey, the light's on at Bandy's. We got to yep. go in and get us a burger. That's it. So back to pass, rolls to his left. Run, oh, he's forced out of mount, runs back to his right, back to his left, throws down in the end zone. And incomplete. I'm not quite sure who he was throwing to. I, well, I think he was throwing to that Charger player, Ashley. Well, that was the only guy in the vicinity. Uh, it looked like maybe Jackson Jones was working back that way. I'm not sure if Tate was just maybe trying to throw it away or what. But we got an injured Charger on the field. Yes, I enjoyed a many a Bandy's burger. Well, and I'll tell you, Ashley, I – as far as restaurants, I miss Goldie's. Oh, Goldie's, the, man, with the, the pickle, pickle bar, bar and oh. the burgers. I'm telling you what, right now, and, and here I'm going to use a phrase, it was larrapin' good. Oh. It was good. And that's also where I met Mandy. At Goldie's? So that's why, you're, that's why you got a special, special thing for Goldie's, because that's where you met your wife. That's right. Uh, Owen Martin's asking me what larrapin means, and it's something I've always heard my dad say, but it just means it's really good, like <laughs> real good, right? Larrapin, you're licking that stuff up. It's good. On the topic of, of good restaurants, and, and the one thing I, I remember Westville for is we would take special trips to Westville to eat at Phil's. Oh, Ashley, let me tell you right now, Phil's was the stuff dreams were made of. You could get... You could get that full pound sirloin, which I like a sirloin just because I don't like a lot of fat on my steak. And you got two sides of salad, rolls, man. And it would, oh my gosh. Phil's was good. And if you didn't get there in time, you I mean, miss out. you'd wait in line. I just always remember, too, they had that one pound hamburger and it was one pound after cooking. Yeah, of meat. Oh. Yeah, and then you got the bun and the fixings. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm prepared for winter. <laughs> I am telling you. I am telling you what now. So trips to the left, shotgun formation, checks the sidelines. Calls coming in, make sure everybody knows. Play clock ticking down two to one. Gets a snap off just before it ticks down zero. Cross over the middle, 
And, man, I think you heard those footsteps uh, yep. coming. Yeah, I think he was a little bit, and understandably so. Um, that was Kobe Baker. You know, he's not one to, to usually drop passes or anything like that. But, you know, when you have someone s screaming your direction, you know, it's, it's hard not to be ready for that. So turnover on downs for the Tigers. Chargers are going to take over uh, at the 26-yard line, first 10. Tahlequah up 38-7 in this 5A district match. Dylan Parrish late to run on the field. Ashley, I got a got a message here on Facebook from Patty Johnson. She said that her husband Walter uh, worked, I guess, where Bandy's was. It started out as Bikes Burger Bar. Have you ever heard of that? I never have. Kelly Tibbetts is telling us to stop talking about Phil's and and Goldie's. That that's good stuff. And then uh, Coach Bardell said, uh, "What about Jerry's downtown Tahlequah?" Listen, now Jerry's is a whole nother issue. That's where Boomerang is is now. Jerry's. You would go there just for the grease. That's <laughs> how good it was. So jet sweep to the left, and Tigers are all over it. Going to be no gain on the play. Oh my goodness! I can't tell you how many gut bombs I've had from Jerry's. I mean, steaks and burgers, and, and and they just cooked it all in the same grease for years. You, you know, know I'm not sure that you know they ever changed it. Oh my goodness! The sign so of a good burger, Ashley, is if you can put that burger, wrap it in some kind of you know butcher paper or some kind of full paper, and then put it in a brown paper sack. And if you can see through that sack in oh, about ten minutes, that's, that's a good burger. That's legit. You know, there's some places in Tulsa that we like to go that are still like that today. And uh, reminds me a lot of Jerry's, yeah. So some old Tahlequah restaurant history. As they run up the middle, Tiger defense there swallowing them up. Nothing going for the Memorial offense. Never had the chicken fried steak. The chicken fried steak from Jerry's, that's what. No, never. I always went with the, Coach always went with the sirloin and, uh, and the burger. So checking some equipment issues and and uh, trying to get that squared away and I'm not sure what he was is uh, like a glove on the field they got it so handoff runs to his left he's got a lane it's going to have the extra effort's going to put him across the first down so first and ten nice pickup for the Chargers so they're going to have the ball about the 39 yard line. 9.15 to go in the fourth. Tigers up 38-17. Tigers defense uh, doing a decent job tonight. They were pitching the shutout, but, you know, it's kind of like we, we said that, and then it's kind of like the old no-hitter talk, you know, and then, then we, we may have jinxed it. So That's Got usually what, what happens. Handoff goes to the outside and makes one man miss, but – Look at that. That is how you swarm a defense right there. We've got a flag on the play, Ashley, back around the, back around where the play well, started. Number 75 is looking at the flag with hands. <laughs> he is. <laughs> and uh, his hands on his hips. I'm fairly certain that that is on, well, it's on Talakwa. And he is, he's just staring at that flag. <laughs> He's not even getting out of the way. He's not. He, 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 he well, says, listen, I'm not moving until y'all figure this thing out. <laughs> well, the penalty was on the Tigers. and He's not taking any more extra steps than he has to. So that's a 15-yard penalty, and I didn't see what the call was. But <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was interesting. I mean, he, he was guarding the flag. Yeah. So here we go. First and 10 from the 45. Memorial takes over. Shotgun formation. That's Jamani Jones is still in the backfield. Twins to the right. High snap. Hand rolls to his left. Trying to get cuts back inside. Still going. <laughs> oh. Loses the ball. It's on the ground. And I believe they were able to jump back on top of it. Actually, so. did you see when he changed directions about five Tahlequah Tigers? 
all got decleated right there. Just <laughs> it's like, whoop, sucked whoop. out the wrong way. The only problem is when he changed directions, he forgot to take the ball. Well, he, he also deked the football. So the inertia, since that's the word of the day, uh, his, of his momentum and whatever, Man. caused that ball to pop right out. Who would have thought you'd get a science lesson listening to us? It's going to bring up second and about 16 for the Chargers. There we go, timeout on the field, Tyler Paul. Well, it's funny is the, the white hat was pointing towards the Tigers and the umpire was pointing towards the Chargers. And ultimately, the white hat changes his mind, says, no, it was Memorial who took the timeout. So, timeout on the field, 7.49 to go. Tigers up, 38-7. Band is back fired up. No complaints from the referees or anybody else out there. So Claremore is now on top of Pryor, 35-28 mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. Collinsville up 17-3 on Sky Took. So a few games around the league we're watching. So motion. Jet sweep to the right, trying to get to the edge. Breaks one tackle. He's to the 40. Gets to the outside to the 35. There's a flag. You might see a down. holding call here, Ashley, on that wide that receiver. wide receiver, he's, as he tried to pull away from it, it looked like he was still attached. Yeah. Give credit to this uh, crew. I think they've done a pretty good job tonight. There hasn't been just a ton of, ton of penalties called. Uh, and they call holding against the, the Chargers. I like this crew. They've done a good job tonight. You know, you know, as much as we like to beat up on them, we've got to give them some praise uh, when, uh, when we see a crew that does a good job. So, Well, as coming from a guy that used to umpire a lot of baseball, I always just kind of figured I'm going to be the guy to take the brunt of it. So, you know, I think most of the time those guys kind of expect to, uh, to take a little more heat than probably what they deserve. <laughs> so. So Twins to the left, shotgun formation, back to pass, looks to his left, lobs one over, it's high, and man. I believe that's incomplete. That is incomplete, but it, that was a. That was interesting. That was a violent landing there by Quayshawn. Quayshawn Leathers does a good job of breaking up that pass, but it looks like he landed awkwardly, and that made my back hurt. So getting their calls in from the from the sidelines. Twin receivers to the top of the top of your screen. That would be to the left. Single back gun. There's snap. He's back to pass. He looks to his left. Rolls to his right. Still looking to his left as he rolls right. And he's just going to try to throw it away. And he's outside the tackle box. And that's Blake Corn. And they're going to call intentional grounding. You know, that was an issue last week, Mark, where yes. I think we disagreed with the call that, you know, when he's outside the tackle box, it shouldn't be grounded. Now, I'm not saying that I'm on the memorial side here, but he's well outside the tackle box. So it may and be I've, a rule that we need to get some clarification upon. Grounding is the call. And so I that thought a spot foul and loss of down. I thought the way the officials were talking, they may wave that flag off, but they didn't. So with that, then Blake Corn should be credited with a QB sack. So they forced him. He wanted to keep throwing it. He wanted to throw it back to his left, but he kept rolling to the right and rolling to the right. And then when he threw the ball, there wasn't a receiver anywhere in the vicinity, but he was well outside the tackle box. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not super up on the OSSAA secondary 
high school rules. Well, and that's that's something too. People don't understand. You can have there can be there can be uh, you know different different set of criteria from high school to to other. Oh man, that got about as close to hitting Bradley Pruitt as he could get and not hit him. Now, someone just texted and said that that was a chop block that that was actually called. Well, that, that may be the case. However, he gave the intentional he, grounding. He gave the intentional grounding signal. And just like earlier, he gave the block in the back signal when it was clearly a holding. So, So interesting, shotgun formation, handoff inside, running hard, driving his feet, and that's going to be a, a pickup of about five. Give a shout out to David Craig listening out there in Tigerland. So couldn't make it to the game, a longtime Tiger and part of that state championship baseball team 96 96 they were a pretty salty baseball team i i was around those days some pretty good ball players back then handoff inside pick up of about two I believe if i'm not mistaken several of those went on to play some college ball uh the aiken Coach Aiken, that's still at the high school. His son. His son, I graduated with Jason. Jason, and that's one of the name. best baseball players. I had him sign a baseball for me as a high school because I knew he's going to be, be famous. Mm -hmm. I did not do a good job keeping up with that ball. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where it's at. But lots, of, lots of great ball players on that: Troy Goose, Matlock, Craig Talbert. You name them. Now, I don't want to start naming them because I'll forget them all. Someone get well, I'll tell you, uh, you might see some good things from the Tiger baseball team this year. Uh, just some of those guys they got, Seth Stacy and Cole Goodnight, Charlie Craiger, those guys. So Carson Ferguson, nice little scamper there, and that's enough for a Tiger first down. Yeah, when we say this week in and week out, it's exciting about Tahlequah Tiger Athletics. There's just a lot of good things happening in all the sports, a lot of excitement. And it seems like when one program starts having success, it really brings success to all the programs. It just really changes the mentality and the attitude there. Look at that hard-nosed running by Carson Ferguson. Whether or not it comes back on a holding penalty or not, that was just an outstanding run. And he just kept those knees pumping. In fact, he need that one, that, that young man that's getting up right there. He need him Number right 40. in the head. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, I believe it was holding. holding. Yeah. Looked like it was our right guard. I have a tendency to watch those linemen who've done a great job all game. Very few penalties, very few mistakes. So that's going to bring up a uh, oh, long ways to go. Boy. Checking the sideline for the call. That's Hunter Smith in at quarterback, if anybody's wondering. Sophomore. Hand off inside. Cuts around the corner. He's got a blocker. Big time block. Look at that. Who is that leading the way right there, Mark? Got to give a shout out to that lineman. I believe that's number 65, uh, Grasshopper. Is it Nick Grasshopper? My goodness. He come around the corner. Yeah, that is 65, Nick Grasshopper. He come around the corner, and he knocked that linebacker silly. Well, and Ferguson had a handful of Grasshopper's shirt and Man. was just saying, lead the way. So, nice pick up there. He's going to bring up second at about 12. Smith back, shotgun. Twins to the right. Fumbles the snap. And he's brought down for a big-time loss there at about the 40-yard line. Got a little chipping, and, here comes, I'm, and uh -oh. here, comes a, here comes a little fight, a little scuffle action. You know what? You know, guys, that's just a. You know, they're 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 getting on to him on the sideline, but you know, they they tackled the quarterback, 
and they were on top of him, and he came over there and knocked him off of him. You know, and then it, then things just got a little chippy. Yep. You know, you gotta you gotta maintain your emotion, but you know, you know you gotta you gotta protect your crew, Mark. That that's right. You you gotta you gotta do that. But you know, I'm kind of actually surprised you didn't see a flag there, and the officials are talking about it. And it looks it looks like there's a uh, you know there's gonna be a no call on that. So probably mutual combat. Well, and it looks like we've, which they pulled Ferguson after that because he was involved in some pushing and shoving. Right. And I cannot see that running back's number, actually. Is that 24? Is that Lane Easton? That's uh, 24 is Reagan McClanahan. McClanahan. Motion to the left. High snap. And the same problem we just had, and they're all on it. And Memorial's saying they've got it, so let's see. And they do. So, bad snap, fumbled on a play, and Memorial's going to take over. As, uh, you know what? Get on the ball there. I, I think maybe what you saw those last two plays, Ashley, you've got a young quarterback in, and I think he's a little jumpy. Uh, and and instead of just playing calm and cool, I think maybe some of those first big-time varsity snaps may have. May have been a little exciting. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that, Mark. So they're going to take over first down from the 33-yard line. Good field position for the Chargers. See what this, this Tiger defense can do. Back to pass, looks to his left. He's wanting to throw. He's got a wheel, right, wheel route wide open, connects, five touchdown, Memorial. And that's a, that's a great play design uh, by Memorial. They run everybody back to the inside and send that wheel out to the to right behind him, and he gets lost in the mess, and he's wide open, puts it on the money. We got and our young Memorial D out there. And that, you know. again. You know, Mark, honestly, at this point, we also got to think about maintaining that 15-point yes. lead. It's, it's not a matter of just trying to run up the score. I want to just clarify something. We're not, we're not trying to be unsportsman, but we want to make sure we maintain 15-point lead because at the end of the season, you know, when it gets it gets yeah. down to it, uh, we need as many points as possible. And, that, of course, is the most that we can get is 15. Exactly. Exactly. So, and that's something you do have to So there's that modified in whatever it is, and he throws it. And it's incomplete. Incomplete. And, I'm you know. I don't even know what that's called. I mean, that looked like straight-up backyard football. That, that's like, you go here, I'm going to go there, I'm going to jump and throw the ball. And yeah, I mean, I, I just, I'm not a fan of gimmick football. So the extra point or two-point conversion is no good. So Tigers on top, 38-13. So they have a 25-point lead. So unless they give up 10 points in the next – Three minutes and 37 seconds, we maintain that 15 point advantage. So I think Gilbert's trying to get them lined out down there and and special teams coach and they're all they're all getting them fired up saying, you know, let's finish this thing. All in all, great game by the Tigers so far. I like seeing these other younger guys getting out here and getting, just getting that experience, you know, and and they've had the opportunity to get a lot of it uh, this season, which will only only benefit them next year as well. As you can see, I think the Tigers are preparing for an onside as all ten players are up and, and only one man back. And there's the onside. It's fielded. Down he goes. Great job. Simeon Armstrong strong on the recovery there for the Tigers. So the Tiger offense is going to march back on the field, first and 10 from their 46-yard line. There's 3.37 still to go in the fourth quarter. It looks like you're seeing some more uh, offensive number ones back out on that field, Ashley. you got Christian back at quarterback. Looks like the starting offensive line. 
Um, basically, the only person that I see that's not a normal number one is the running back. And who? that's number 24. Who would we say that is? It's Reagan McClanahan. Reagan well, he's running it right there. Nice, nice job right there. It's a good run. Yeah, that's gonna be. That's gonna be. Uh, see if they're gonna wave them on, and they are. That's a ten-yard pickup. Got a shaking up charger, but I think he's gonna be okay. So, first and ten for the Tigers. Nice pickup there by McClanahan. They're running the clock. So the clock begins to tick. 3.20 to go in the fourth quarter. Christian in the shotgun formation. Tight left. Doubles left. Wide receiver backs to the left. Another high snap. Handoff inside. To the corner. To the 40. Gets to the 35. And he's ran down and tackled out of bounds at about the 31 and a half. They may mark it at the 31. Another good pickup by McClanahan. McClanahan's a 5'9", 150 sophomore. It's good to see those guys. You know, I don't think we've called the McClanahan name this year. Frankly, and I, and I, I don't mean to make light of the name, but when I think McClanahan, I always think of the Golden Girls. Yes, yes. You guys are way too young for the Golden Girls. <laughs> Hand off again inside, and this time he's tackled, but he's, I think he's able to get back to that line of scrimmage. Now they're saying Malik McMurtry is 24. Okay. Well, I know Malik. I've had Malik in, in – uh, Junior high baseball. I'm just going to tell you right now, if that's Malik, he is a he he's a he's an athlete. That kid can run. He's strong. He's smart, and a good kid. So, um, well, I do uh, know our roster up here is is labeled incorrect. So, well, I, and actually, I do know this. I do know that a lot of those freshmen that now that their season's over, they have been brought up. Some of them, anyway, have been brought up to the varsity. Just in case something like this, in case one of these last two games they got a shot at getting in, and and I bet that is Malik, and Malik is is the potential to be a special athlete at Tahlequah High School. I, I've heard many good things about that young man, and uh, I know they are excited about his potential and and a lot of that freshman class, and and I think they've done a good job on, from the seventh and eighth grade and ninth grade uh, programs. So, exciting to see what's going on here at Tahlequah. So, a minute 15 to go. Shotgun formation. There's snap, handoff inside. Cuts back to his left. And he's met. He's still running his feet. That game clock actually hitting one minute right now. Now we're 59 seconds. A great, great showing here by the Tiger. They're just trying to run the clock out. Tigers will move, Mark, to 8-1 and one on the season as they travel to Claremore next week to face the Zebras in a, uh, a big-time battle. That's an important game for us. That is an important game. I mean, you're talking possibly the difference in finishing second or, or uh, somewhere on further down the line. Obviously, we we want to we want to go there and, and put the smack down on mm -hmm. on Claremore, and that helps us in our playoff uh, rankings and and where we might potentially play. You know, as you know, we hosted a playoff game for the first time in years last year when Bishop McGinnis came here, as they made it a quarterfinals. So I know the Tigers are excited to get back to the to the quarterfinals. And I'd like to see them, and I know they would too, like to get to the semis and on into mm -hmm. the finals. That, that's right. You know, you always want to keep moving, but but you know, it's one of those things when you you start you start eliminating teams, you get into some really good competition. And I'll throw Tahlequah in there. I mean, Tahlequah is one of the better teams in the state. There's no doubt about it. They they definitely have overachieved from what they were predicted. You know. 
uh, to do uh, this season. Very proud of what they've done and what they've accomplished, and they should be very proud of themselves because going eight and one thus far, that's a big time accomplishment for the program. It's been years since that's happened. So very exciting, and that's, guys, that's going to do it. You know, they're going to let that clock run out. Tigers going to get out of here with the win, 38-13 over Tulsa Memorial. That's a, that's a good win right there, Ashley. And like you say, man, we're going to week 10, last week, regular season week, and the Tigers are 8-1. Are and one. I mean, that's, uh, man, there's a lot of teams around the state in 5A that like to be 8-1. Eight, eight and one. Uh, so you, you got to like your chances going into, you got to go into that hostile, hostile zebra territory, as you say, and uh, take care of business. But what a game. They did a great job. Very, very excited for them. And uh, hope you guys tune in next week. Uh, if you can't make it out to Claremore, but we would rather you load up in your cars and, and make a big showing. Uh, but we understand that if you can't make the trip, listen to us at Tahlequah Tiger Athletics. Dot com or, or download the Mascot Media app. But as for Mark Jordan, I'm Ashley Stevens. Hey, we'll see you next week.